welcome to the Leaky Cast. This is the Japan Community's Guild Wars 2 podcast for the week of August 3rd. I'm your host, Sucker Cynic, and joining me today is Nubarama. Hi! Durin. Hello. And Shinboy. Guild Wars, more like Build Wars. Aww. Hell yeah! Off <laughs> <laughs> to a great start already. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you should, you should be listening to the Billcast. I, I love the Billcast this Don't week. Has anyone checked it out? That son of a bitch I haven't bothered, stole my I haven't name. Listening to it. It's pretty name. good. <laughs> stole my name. That's my you name. Mean Ed, you mean Ed, Ed Park? Ed Park. I am the only Wait, is, Ed Park. Is it Edmund? Is he also an Edmund? Podcast. Is he also an Edmund Park? He, I don't know. He might be Edward. He might be Edward. He might be Edward. Either way. Ooh, he goes by Ed point. Park, does he? I, he goes I by Ed Park. I think he does. Either way, that's, we're talking that's about Torgrim. We're talking about Torgrim for people. Talking about the, my name. We're talking about the and superior. And someone point that out to him. You're watching his terrible live stream. Tell him that's identity <laughs> fraud and it's illegal. And I'm calling the police. But he's older than you. It doesn't. I'll say, isn't he older than yeah. you? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. New secretly 32 years old. I am secretly 32 years old. Anyways, so just say, just people tell age different Canada. someone mention off the cuff on if you watch those things, just say. That is identity fraud, and you are going to get arrested. <laughs> if you watch those fine. things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I totally like. Yeah, Torgrim's great. I, I love him on the um, the Bill Cat. He's well, I don't know. He's good. I, I think he's cool, but there's definitely negatives to his personality. Haven't they only had like one two. episode of that? Or two, two, oh, two. Two. two is significantly better I than one. I haven't bothered to listen. He, he also has it's, some. It's, he also has good. some pretty good. Like, uh, I would say theory crafting videos, but just kind of videos where he explains the build he's running. Uh, while yeah, I, I watched yeah. a few of those. Yeah, no, I watched one of his rifle warrior ones. Yeah. and It was pretty good. Yeah, no, he's, he's totally. He's like he's one of the few people who does um, well commentated Guild Wars two videos. Like a lot, a lot of guys out there. Is illegal. <laughs> like a lot of guys out there like do commentated videos, but they aren't good at oh, commentating. I got real deep into that this last week, uh, leading up to the the, <laughs> the stress test. And the stress test. Man, there are some. There are some bad ones out there. Holy shit! Yeah, are, are, some... are you talking about the thing you linked me? <laughs> no, 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 no. Like okay. there were actual like like PvP matches that people did that they decided to go and do like a, a kind of a commentary shoutcast type of thing behind it. And like there was one in particular I was listening to. The guy was trying way too hard to sound like <laughs> you know maybe what a professional FPS shoutcaster would sound like. I oh guess. god! Oh, no. I mean, oh, he just sounded geez. bad. That and, sounds like a and then like time right he's there. he's running some music behind it too, and the music is like louder than him, so he's like fighting for volume control over it. Oh. Was it like crazy dubstep? Yes, I hope so. Okay, which okay, was the only, only acceptable form. Yeah, of casting yeah, music. it was the only like real <laughs> redeeming factor. Why are we starting off with a depressing it. topic? I am so depressed right now. I feel like because no, Togrim's great because because there's some people out there who do a good job of it. Um, uh, there's guys from the Super Squad who are pretty good. Guys from Team Paradigm who are pretty good, and Togrim is pretty great as well. Um, aside from that, uh, New Barama. I'm gonna go ahead and say this: the team paradigm, team paradigm guys are assholes, and I they might be good at what they do, but somewhat. fuck, I, I can't even stand watching their. Yo, if you're listening to this podcast, come at me, bro. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> it's just they're, you're, they're taking this shit way too seriously. Like, I'm, too, so like I'm, I'm, I'm watching their videos and like listen to a dude like yelling at another guy and like talking about like other people just being stupid and. It's it's not like this is a fucking game. Get over yourself. Oh, come on, I call yeah, out that's, arena that's net fair. developers on being stupid trannies all the time. No, but this isn't. This is like well, it is kind of the same, but it's <laughs> more like um, <laughs> it's 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 more like uh, it's when playing a game. I do not want to be in a situation where anyone is being negative. Really, like if it's. I like having fun when I play video games. We, we played a bunch of wait, PvP. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Slow down, slow down. Before when we were talking, I said, it's all about fun, and you said, no, it's all about winning. Yeah, that's true. But winning is fun. Well, okay, all right. Shinbo, you were there. Right. Did, did, did I act like the Team Paradigm guys yeah, like when it's, we it's, did structure? Yeah, like it's all about... I don't know. I wasn't on Mumble because I forgot my mic. <laughs> it's all, all right, about, it's all about winning to an extent, as long as you're not being a douche. But when you got a guy yeah. like like demeaning other people because God forbid they didn't call out that somebody was attacking because maybe you know they were trying to stay alive, like people make mistakes, <sighs> but that's no reason to call them a fucking yeah. moron. I, I just can't wait till these weird pre-game 
teams kind of get dominated by the actual eventual. Like two years from now, I find it really unlikely that either Team Paradigm or Super Squad will be in the top ten. I agree. Because inevitably, there's the glorious or, comeback of Rebel Rising or Evil. That's what I'm. Or, or, or Irresistible Blokes. I want to see those guys come back. I, I want to see the, like the, the true hardcore. I will say, having you know, being, being a, a fan of you know, some esports. War Machine. Teams. Damn straight. <laughs> what, what are you naming? I don't know any of these. These are Let's like go War Machine. some indie grunge bands from the 1980s. <laughs> that that's no that's pretty much what they are. I, I Guild Wars One struck like PvP from like the ter- first two years of Guild Wars One. Being, like, being a fan of some esports there. stuff and, and loosely following some of it, I, I would love to see a Guild Wars Two Evil Geniuses uh, team because I feel like they. Uh, the, the people they tend to ha- have, at least within the StarCraft II community, tend to be some very down to earth and like generally fun guys, but they are still very. That, sound, good that sounds do. cool. I, I, like, I'm not, not familiar with them. But that sounds that sounds what Who? I'm looking for in my content. Wait, are we talking about casters or? No, no, no. The, the player, <laughs> the team players. Oh, oh, I yeah. Do. Uh, well, uh, it, he's 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 not as bad as he makes himself out to be. That's an image that he has uh, perpetuated. Anyway, anyways, back, new Brahma. Back I don't know topic, who any of these people are. Or going what back have you been up to this week? Topic is what we're doing right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I, Let's still talk about Guild Wars Two for a second I've here. I've been helping my mom move for for the first half of the week, and I slept for the second half of the week. And then, and then see, there was neither of those things. There yeah, was, there was some kind of um, test for Guild Wars Two that um, happened. No, the, none of those things are what I want to hear from you. What I want to hear from you mm-hmm. is a oh, no. specific oh. conversation we had. Um, when, when you approached me as, and, and you asked a, a very interesting question, I, can you, can you remember what it was? Just, um, I asked you, I asked you for your um, social security number and you said, I'll go get that. And- so Nubarama walks up to me on Steam chat. <laughs> oh, and no, I, I did not just come up to you on Steam back. chat. What? Wasn't it a Steam chat or was it oh, a Mumble? It was, I, I came on Mumble and then you linked me a video. You were, No. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I linked you a video because um on my on my recommended list on the side, I don't I don't know how I get it. It kind of says something about me, right? It kind of says something about me. But <laughs> on my recommended YouTube oh, stuff on go. the side, big review. Um, it, it was like Colin Johansson like talks about Guild Wars Two or some shit, and then like and like then like wooden potatoes and like Torgrim, and then at the bottom is like this dude, and like like half half the, the image was like this blackness, and there's the like, bottom quarter of a dude's face. So I click on it. I got, I'm wondering what it, like how how is it even really relevant to me so it's this dude who starts off the video by apologizing to his viewers for not um for, oh, yeah. for, 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 for not posting a video last week or like an impressions video last week or something and i'm like okay what i still have no idea what this is about I, i'm int- i'm intrigued now because clearly he, there's like eight thousand views or something and this guy clearly has like some weird following so <laughs> it's on his face right he, he's talking to the camera and he goes, but this week I've got something amazing to show you. And he turns the camera around and it's just this close up shot of this like figurine. It was like a, a Samus figurine. <laughs> oh, good God. And he oh, starts geez. like deconstructing oh, it, like God. detail about like the paint job on it and like the, and, like, the, the angle she's the in job? and how it like encapsulates Samus as a person. And I'm like, oh my God. And then you're like, immediately isn't this it. crazy? And I'm like, no, I. That's acceptable, and I. I got to the point in my life. Oh god, that's, that's oh, an acceptable god. thing to me. Like, I. I don't own any figurines, but I will tell the truth. In the last week, I have been convinced by some very shady people that that is an acceptable idea, and I'm starting to think that is an acceptable. No, you should not <laughs> listen so to these I'm, shady I'm people. I'm a little scared here because I've seen that video too. <laughs> Oh god, am I the only one here who has not seen this video? I don't even know how I saw it anymore, but like how is this guy infected? I think, our you, lives? I think you were there. I think you were there. No, um, no, I saw this on you? a really bad YouTube ben- bender I did. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> um, I feel like I should just like watch this right now. <laughs> So I, I I couldn't I couldn't track it down for you. Well, I could, but I'm not going to. Let's just say that. <laughs> but more um, of those videos will pop up. It's, it's right in your 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 watch history. So. Oh well, yeah, exactly. It's right there. But I'm terrified of how many how much overlap there is between our listener base and this person. So I'm not going to reveal <laughs> it because I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Um, but it, like the Maybe guy was like, "You didn't say your question, my cousin." Does, you know, to each their own. <laughs> Indeed, no. You know, if you listen to the podcast, email us at thelinkincast at gmail dot com. <laughs> like, like Mabim Bam, my brother, and brother, and me. I have lines which I draw, which I'm fine with. So if I offend any of my viewers who are into say, I mean, you know, detailed anime figurines, I don't care. <laughs> I, I no, don't I mean, like, care. I, I, 
I I'm I like anime. I'm a jerk. I I don't I'm a jerk. I'm fine. Okay. I'm a jerk. But um and I've gotten to this point where some of the strangest things that, you know, regular people, regular healthy people who are productive <laughs> members of society would honestly disagree that it's a right thing to do and I'm I'm hoping my condition doesn't get worse. But I feel like I'm slowly <laughs> drifting away oh, from that correct side of reality, and, oh, and God. I feel like this is this isn't this is socially acceptable. Have you been? So the have, question you have you been, me, right? have you been ordering this things video. from websites that have no English? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but we all been have. on those websites in in the last couple of weeks. Is well. so. Noob goes on, and, he, and after I leaked this video, he goes, um, "Is it wrong if I spend like?" <laughs> Fifty dollars on this, and he and he links it to me. And I just like this stupid chibi chick in like a, a lion outfit thing. And I, oh god, I hate chibi things. Oh man, that's <laughs> noob. Do you so have this link oh. available? <laughs> I, I I um. You have a problem. I have a problem. <laughs> Is he like? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Like, I am a massive nerd. I'll be honest. I'm sitting in the room where I'm recording this, like, maybe 10 feet away. I have in, like, a frame that I spent upwards of, like, $130 on a sepia tone Jurassic Park. <laughs> so, okay, so wait, like, it, I'm not afraid. I have no shame. What, does, what is that? Does it count I as an, does it count as a, a, a anime, a de- highly detailed anime figurine if I have some characters from Final Fantasy VII? Yes, yes. I probably does. No, it probably they're all does. male. One probably of them. does. Don't criticize me. Look, they're no, all I male. They're not the the creepy short skirt female ones. They're all. I know. Like, I know. But like at some point, oh, what the fuck, you know, noob? It's kind of the same thing. <laughs> 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 I like I do and try to turn it back around. <laughs> It's, it's, it's great. This is one of those, God, this is the, the revelations podcast. Where she, everyone slowly reveals their deep her ball dark sides. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, did you link it again? Oh God, you, you're oh, you're the fucking worst. How, Wait, you were, you were gonna pay a good amount of money for $50 that? Fifty dollars for that? Fifty dollars? Noob, you have a problem. <laughs> Wait, okay, noob, can you describe this figurine from your perspective, noob? It is. Uh, I'm scared because I feel like I'm just gonna be lynched one day. <laughs> These people in robes are gonna come to my house and be like, "Or do you this person who is on this podcast?" And I'm gonna say, "Well, the listeners oh, yeah. have to know. The listeners have to know." Um. So yeah, for anyone listening, I'll probably post the link to the giant bomb thread. Um, I. So how was your week, Duran? I mean, no, 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 no. Okay, it is. It is a lion. It's 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 a figure from Lion King. I'll say that. No, that's no, all. Is so who's, who is this girl from? Who is this? Girl? What anime wait, is this wait, girl from? Lion. This is. I feel like. I feel like I'm going to do something wrong. <laughs> now, noob, before you go, noob, before you go any further, know that this is being recorded. <laughs> really, I came here on a podcast multiple times, even. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we have two recordings, two Actually, backups going. Three, we have three recordings. Oh yeah, we have three um, recordings going. So uh, it it is from an anime, and it is a figure of a a lion, and Snoop Lion. <laughs> God. Damn it! I was really <laughs> he always that got that. He always stuff. revealed because because when he first leaked this to me, he gave me like this detailed description of who this character was and like what anime she was from. I mean, Tarkin. Tarkin knows. Tarkin's fine. Right? So yeah, don't Tarkin's not me. here. <laughs> I guess we can. Move. I guess we can move. Let's just say that. Just no, 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 no. First, no, we, we, we need on. at least know what anime. This At some is point, from. we have to move on. <laughs> well, it, it's from a franchise. Is is what I'm saying. Okay, what what is, what is the Aren't franchise? All anime well, is, franchises. Well, I can, I'll say this isn't like creepy. No, this is creepy. Naked. How uh, it's, it's pretty this creepy. Is creepy in a different it's way. Like, it's having, a lion like, a with a mini skirt on. <laughs> Except the plush doll is a lion that has. Do you a mini own skirt mini on. plush doll, <laughs> Snoop? Uh, actually, I, the only I don't I actually don't have any physical like manis- manifestations. Oh yeah, you told me this. Like, yeah. Other than game boxes at this point. Mostly because I don't, I don't spend my expendable income on like. Stuff. And I said to you Until on the day, now. like, Until exactly. Now. Like, at, Until now. at the <laughs> moment, you won't like, you won't have immediate regret when you buy this, right? Like, you'll buy it and you'll know in your heart that I, you're an evil person. No, I feel yeah. like but, I feel like I'll have the immediate regret, like immediately, <laughs> right? And then, yeah. and then later, you open the box and look at like, what the fuck did I just do? Let's get this other figurine to complement this one. 
and then it'll be exactly this, this like the problem comes in down like, the rabbit hole not, you not go. this move but like four house moves down the line like your force house <laughs> when you realize that the truck the moving truck is filled with figurines <laughs> when you're like 30 years old and you pull this thing out of a box <laughs> We, uh, I'd say surrounded by others like it. Yeah. <laughs> and like and DVDs. And it's sticky. And it's sticky. <laughs> <laughs> it's sticky. Oh, God. Oh, God. All right. All right. Uh, you're going to have to get on. your own like, so story. Durin, the listeners, what do you mean up to this week, Duran? Oh, man. Um, probably felt pretty disgusting. <laughs> and um, I think, how was your week, Duran? What have you done? Um, <laughs> I... any figures recently? No. No, <laughs> thankfully. No. God, no. I'm not that sick. <laughs> Uh, yet, no, yet, yet, yet. 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 It's only yo that char plushie looks pretty oh, awesome. Char plushie looks pretty cute. Uh, no, I played uh, a bit more Smite. Um, I'm still enjoying that game more than I probably should. Um, oddly enough, like even though I've unlocked another hero, I still keep sticking with the same one. So I don't know what that says about maybe the, the heroes themselves or just that I'm bad at everything but with the one player. <laughs> um. And then uh, recently you started. Wait, so is, is Smite still compelling, or is it just like a stopgap? Um, I think it's something I'm playing right now because I don't have Guild Wars, and it's a good, like, more specifically, <laughs> it's it's a good uh, replacement for uh, the kind of competitiveness of the PvP. Like, I, it's it's a real fun right. competitive game. Um, but I've been playing less um, Smite because I've been playing a bit of Team Fortress Two. What? I didn't know this. That game's great. Yeah, I forgot how awesome that game is. And the pyro is amazing. Same thing. You're collecting hats. The same thing as collecting figures. (laughs) Except I'm not spending any money because those hats don't make my pyro hit harder. Oh, dude. There there are hats that go for like hundreds of dollars. Oh, it's ridiculous. I know. It is ridiculous. ridiculous. People have Um, earned money off TF2. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But no, I've I've just been going back and playing that and, and remembering how awesome it was. I haven't played it in forever. Um. But I, I, like, is there still a big? Com- uh, did you play with the giant bomb guys or like who did you play? No, with? I is actually. A big community? Uh, I no. I guess I, I, I literally same. went to like just kind of a, a random server that somebody from my Steam friends list, uh, which is probably somebody from the Penny Arcade community, um, was playing on and and just kind of been enjoying playing kind of mostly by myself. <laughs> right. Okay. But that's that's fine. That's fair. Like two, that's I'm fair. just two four as a pyro. Fucking best time ever. Like that is. That's- just, I love two fort. That yeah, two fort. I mean, it's it's basically dust two for for team fortress two. Mm-hmm. Oh no, concerned. it's it's I f- it's it's basically FY Ice World because it's the same symmetrical map. By the way, for anybody who uh, might be you know really just can't get over like new not wanting to reveal where that character is from, <laughs> that would be uh, Fate Tiger Coliseum, and the girl is the Saber Lion. Girl. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How did you figure Thanks this uh, out? My wife actually sent it to me on Steam. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, she God. looked over and saw it on the screen and, and knew that I was wondering oh, where it was God. from, so she, oh, she so informed y- for us. Don't blame me, your wife no, she, knows this. She oh, Google God. searched it. <laughs> okay, alright. Alright. You can actually search by yeah. images. So uh because this, this conspiracy could have gone all the way deep right there. <laughs> all the way. Well, the thing is, this isn't the only thing I was looking at, so my secrets are safe. It's fine. Oh, I saw the other thing, like the two hundred dollar chick on a bike said. thing. That was <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't understand. See, noob, like, you, you picked a very <laughs> tame image of that character. This is, well, this is oh, the figure. Oh, God, this I don't need to hear that. Figure. I don't like, want it. I'm not going to be, like, because I don't want to have people coming into my house and seeing, like, what other people might have, you know, that people, you know, you know what I'm talking about. The kind of oh, God, Dern, why would you link that? Oh, I'm, I'm clicking oh, this link. God. Oh, God. <laughs> that's, Mubarama, you're, you're uh, the biggest pervert. <laughs> <laughs> no! That's For not- anyone asking, I am not going to link that one in the thread. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. So yeah, um, to say, do you? so <laughs> Team Fortress am, 2. This is, uh, <laughs> this is, this is prejudice. This is an attack I, on I his demand person. demand my right to free speech. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then no. uh, started up a game of uh, Civ Five with some friends yesterday, and had an absolute blast with that. That ended with war, as any good That's Civ Five cool. game does. Um, yeah, yeah. So I've never played Civ. Oh, see, I've never played a Civ. Game. I, you know, I wasn't actually. Neither I wasn't. I. I was telling Noob about it earlier today. Actually, I wasn't actually going for a militaristic um, play style. Yeah, uh, so but ironic. 
the uh, friend that was at my southern border was, and I knew he was, so I started putting um, units on his borders, and it turns out people don't really like it when you do that. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> he eventually declared war on me, um, along with one of the other guys. So I, I wound up fighting a war on two fronts, paid off the other guy, gave him one of my cities, and, and uh, I think it was actually just the city, um, and turned all my attention on the one friend. And he, after starving his entire economy and all of his cities have come to a standstill, he's finally decided to go ahead and back off now because nobody fucks Woo! with Mother Russia. Mother Russia. <laughs> Why don't you just make you should have you should have left like one city remaining and made it your puppet city and say you can play as my puppet city. <laughs> well, see that's the thing though is that I never once I never once broke borders. I stayed on my my side of the border and fought oh, him so from there. Fought a defensive war. Yeah, I fought a d- defensive you, war. You did I was not, you did not World War Two Russia him. No, I, did I didn't pull Super Mega Canada like you but do see, every time you play Civ. Here, here here's the secret because I know he doesn't listen to the podcast. Um, the plan is once his. Once he calls off the war, I plan to go silent until I get some uranium together and then just nuke his ass. <laughs> Fucking nuke him. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. See, this makes me really wish I had friends like that played PC games, because this sounds really cool. Oh, it's a, it's a blast. I oh, I man. love Civ Five. If only I like strategy so I'm just games. waiting for Rome Total War 2, because Rome Total War is amazing. See, I, 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 I've strategy never gotten into those games game. before. That, that one is very accessible, and I think that's why I've gotten into it. Um, it's very, very easy to just kind of mm-hmm. quick up and play. Quickly pick up, pick and, play, up yeah. and play, yeah. Um, Click up and yeah. play. Quick up and play, yes. Uh, <laughs> Anime figurines. How about those guys? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so basically, <laughs> they're easy to pick up and play with. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. I was gonna. I was gonna say it, but Shinboy did it for me. <laughs> That's so what Shinboy, I'm here. What have you been doing this week? <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been playing some Guild Wars original oh, Guild Wars. Oh game. shit. Yeah, I played like a couple hours. I was 38 out of 40. Oh, sorry, 38 out of 50 for the Hall Monument stuff. So I'm just like, I'm going to do something that I really do not want to do and just sit here for three hours and get up to 40. Oh, God. But if we're, if we're talking about secret nerdy things, in addition to that um, Jurassic Park map, I also have <laughs> an equally expensively framed Dead Space poster thing. Oh, that's not too I bad. feel like this is acceptable to you guys, but what I'm doing is just... <laughs> it, 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 I might as well be a pedophile. And it, well, I mean, <laughs> look at what you chose like at your away. first. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, well, okay, I have, I have, I have, I have figurines <laughs> of like you know Sephiroth and Cloud from Final Fantasy VII up here. Like they're, they're you know big masculine dudes with big swords. Your first. And to be fair, I, know, I, 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 I still loop lumped into them in the same. <laughs> your first, thing. your first, yeah. your first uh, figurine is of a girl that looks like she's maybe five years old in a lion outfit. Oh, you don't, you don't get it. You don't get it. <laughs> no, I don't get it because no, I'm I not sick in the head. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. Do I have any figurines? Uh, I'm trying to. Well, think. Wait, did you get the deluxe edition? I don't own any, and it doesn't matter. You've probably offended no, I, at I least one person listening to this podcast. Right. I probably have, but you know. If if Rawson was here any. or Tarkin, they'd be okay with it. Probably. Rawson would be Rawson okay with it. Is that a good thing? A <laughs> that, yeah, that's not that's not that's really a very good argument. Um, soundtracks don't count. <laughs> yeah, and well, like, yeah, if, I look my, if you. I look in my closet or not my closet, my um, bookshelf, it's all books, and I don't have any like again anything like that. So I'm yeah, okay. that's a, it's that's an amount. argument though. It's, like, it's not like it's not that like you you've lived a long life with this with a significant <laughs> amount of disposable income to, in order to like you know <laughs> gather these things to you. You're just starting out your adventure now, really. Your Ash Ketchum and your first catch is this ridiculous <laughs> little honest, anime girl. I I have a I have an internship at City Hall, and apparently there there's a specialty store close to City Hall. <laughs> a uh, specialty store, <laughs> quote unquote. And uh, we should get back to. Talking about Guild Wars 2. And oh, playing. man. What fun is that? Let's talk about Shoot Mania. Oh, yeah. Been You've been that. playing Shoot Mania. What's up? How was it? I, did, I played like I played maybe an hour of it like when I first bought into the beta after like my beta time ended. And I was like, this game's pretty bad. Like It's not much fun. And then the TNT happened on Giant Bomb, and that was one of the most fun like, <laughs> gaming experiences I've had in a long time. So... If you can get a lot of people on a server, I mean a lot, or even for certain game modes like 20 plus, that game is a blast. It is so much fun. But, okay, so we, we said this before the book, and, and my immediate response was, is it fun because you haven't played CS 1.5 in a while? Because that's where I want my shooter action. I don't really care no, for how they approach it. In It's not 
fun in a way that like a really tight competitive shooter is. It's fun because of the ridiculousness. Yeah, I mean, we, then, we'd we'd just go for UT two thousand four. We'd be fair here. It's not. It's not technically um, sound. No, not at all. <laughs> I mean, Wait, I mean, what do you? What, what does that mean? Mania. Oh yeah, it's yeah, like that, yeah. but a shooter. Yep. So like, pretty, yeah, pretty much, much on all accounts. Yeah, it looks swimming, but like some Very of some swimming. of the it Very is it is kind of swimmy. I, I can't stand but, that. Uh, some of the, some of the maps on like uh, some of the servers that I've been playing are really really fun. Like the one map that they played on TNT, which is just like the long strip in the middle, and everyone gets launched into it. That map's pretty great if you get <laughs> a lot of people. I, it's just chaos. But, but would you play that over UTC two K four? That's that's the question. You know, I love UT two K four. Um, I wouldn't play it over it. I would play it for different reasons. Right. Okay. I, I can't. Yeah, no, I, I don't. I don't know enough about. But would you recommend it to the users, and why? I would recommend it to the users if you want a fun, stupid, laid-back shooter where you can still compete with each other without it getting like cutthroat. Right. Yeah, that's that sounds so. That like, just like big dumb fun is right. one of the issues because like UT two K four is like is like twitchy in a way that like it requires a lot of like precise timing and aiming and skill. Yeah. This is twitchy in a way that like. You're just sort of dumping and hoping you, hoping you hit someone. <laughs> <laughs> well, Everyone's and, dumping it all the time. Like, you can't even really dump because the way the the a- ammo is is done. Like you get like six shots. That's a great point. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, you get like four shots. But that's like the honestly, worst like it. unless it's it's really not as bad as people make it out to be. Because I'll admit, uh, I, I watched, I played for part of the TNT. I played till I like, killed Jeff and then I left. <laughs> um, but and then and then I watched the rest of the stream while I was like eating dinner or something, and it is a terrible game to watch compared to playing. Right. Okay. But what what's like most a lot of shooters, it's like like Unreal Tournament. It's at least decently entertaining to watch, like relative to playing it. It Shumania is not that at all. It's so much more fun to play than it is to watch. But but doesn't um but how do you reconcile with the ammo thing? Like how how do you like that's the big thing during brought up. Like you only have six it's, shots it, or whatever. It sucks when you first start playing and then you. I don't know. It it's kind of sounds like a, a solution to a problem that shouldn't exist, but you just sort of have to get used well, to it. Right, but the, right. the the problem with it is like like you said, it it basically it feels like a twitch shooter, except that you can't like it's it's the kind of game where you just kind of dump on fools until they die, but you can't do that in that game, and especially when like like on that TNT when I saw them uh, running the the quake level, like that that level just doesn't work. That that game style doesn't work when you've got like six shots to shoot. Yeah, like, but uh, there is a way in the map editor to just like dump. So maybe it's somewhere within the architecture. <laughs> I really hope there is. The yeah, if that's, if that. that's yeah. the case, and like there are our servers that are doing that, I would be way more interested in checking that game out. You should you should still check it out anyway, because I mean it's cheap. It's under twenty bucks. So all right, even if you play it, that's like, twenty bucks. A I can while, spend on gems. Still though. totally worth it. I guess, <laughs> and bring it back response. to Gear Wars too. So you can put it to buying a figure. That's our off-topic discussion for the week. No, buying um, buying forty percent of a figure apparently. <laughs> the yeah, better noobs, whatever man. That's so fucked up, noob. That is so fucked up. I I, I love that we brought it up on the show. Which forty percent would you buy? <laughs> well, okay, here I, I, Bo- I top was, half or bottom half, noob. Okay, I, Call I'm it. looking back, and there are magazines. For that's like the nerdiest thing I have, like gaming magazines. Okay. Yet that's again, you, you, this is invalidated by your first purchase being a crazy anime figurine. Oh God, <laughs> silence! That one. Silence! Oh jeez! By the way, are, are you doing some weird shit on your end? Because I'm getting some weird feedback. Anyway, um, all right. So, moving on to the news this week. He's putting his figures, <laughs> his figurines into the mic. <laughs> it's not gross. No, <laughs> don't pick on your rim. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Yeah, I, I want to see the noob defense force defend this. <laughs> god. Oh god! Um, it's just an army of anime characters. <laughs> no, even worse if they all agree with him. How bad would that be? Oh god! <laughs> I'm sorry, listeners, but you know, I, again, I don't, I know, I'm not afraid of offending people if they're particularly into. Well, right, yeah, anime so is one thing, but... on this podcast. <laughs> Yo, I'm into super nerdy things. I am never touching anime. <laughs> I like I like anime. Well, my defense is I like I'm anime. Asian. I'm Asian, so suck it. I'm Asian. He does have slanty yeah. eyes. I can confirm you this. Have slanty <laughs> eyes. Um, <laughs> all right. So the first news topic this week. Um, hey, Guild Wars Two. We're talking about that now. Um, 
Oh, dude, that video. Let's talk about that. That <laughs> video is great. We'll talk about that. <laughs> this, oh, God. The thread, the thread that Benny made um, first was the, that. That was the first time I watched that video. Wait, Benny made Benny put Gangnam Style on a video. On a, we're talking about this, like, obsc- well, in my opinion, obscure oh, no, it's South good, Korean. I believe it was Pop on star. No, a friend of mine is in Korea and he said he saw him live and they blasted at the clubs like every night. Oh, man. It's to- wait, it, new, wait, can you like through who this person in is? Australia? No, no, I don't think so. Maybe. I don't oh, know. They, new? He hit like the top charts in some countries. Um, I feel like we should do this at the end of the podcast. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. This is very, very Because we've been a bit topic. too off topic. What better time? I guess, I guess we've been a bit off topic. Um, a bit off topic. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. A little. Uh, so the first news topic this week is, so some footage of the city Ebenhawk has been revealed um, by the German website buff.de. They said they would, like at the start of the week, um, they, they announced on their podcast that they had some interesting footage to show us. And what happened after then was the Nest news topic, like the uh, stress test. Uh, so everyone completely forgot about it. But at the end of this week, I think it was just today morning or something, buff.de showed a uh, video of some, like they got permission from Arena to show it, um, of them moving through the Fields of Desolation, which is the level 30 to 40, one of the level 30 to 40 areas in Guild Wars 2. Um, and some very short footage at the end of the city, which I can now confirm now, of Ebonhawk. Um, I would personally say, don't, Look up this video. You I, know what I, Cynic did? He what? he said this is a really cool video of something, and then he just made me watch it. What a jerk! I I said the opposite of that. I said it was this is an awesome awesome video. Don't watch um, it. <laughs> I don't recall that. See, I don't I don't buy the whole spoiling things for yourself. Nonsense. I do. I I I, I, I feel bad that I watched this video because Evan Hawk looks spectacular. If that I'd game is a surprise to me, percent of the game games I played, I've read up the ending to the ending to the game before I finished. You're also the person who doesn't play Skyrim because he opens the console. You're like the worst person <laughs> in the world. What? I open the console in Skyrim. Yeah, but do you yeah, then continue? Then do you then proceed to close Skyrim and never play it? And then again, repeat that no. process over and over again? Okay. No, then I don't close Skyrim and decide to spend my money on anime <laughs> figures. So, I didn't so you're not decide. Like I did not decide. He's in thought. Get off my back, man. <laughs> he has... He has he's, he's, he's got... The password entered on his PayPal account, but he hasn't hit entered yet. He hasn't hit it. <laughs> yeah, my PayPal account got locked, and I don't know why, Aww. and they won't tell me why. Aww. So, Ebonhawk is a city for... Well, it was this new Brahma. Can you give me the background of Ebonhawk? Because it's from uh, mainly Eye of the North, Hawk right? was established right at the end of Guild Wars, so it's a bit off from where Guild Wars timeline is right now, the original Guild Wars. And it is, like, the last line of defense. So it was built up of the... Ebengard, which are like uh, Ascalon's elite troops who were sent into the Char homelands. And so they built up this fortress, and now it stands in between the Char and the the giant mountains that are the Shiver Peaks. And basically, it's like Ascalon's last standing fortress. And yeah, the so huge thing because was like there was a giant war between the Char and Ascalon. Exactly. Well, yeah, specifically the humans. We yeah. said Ascalon, and for those not familiar with it, um, the that was the that's where the Char homelands are now. Uh, so, at, like old Ascalon is part of where the Char homelands are. That's where the humans used to be, or one of the three, I think, it was major factions of humans back in the day. If it was pre Guild was one. Um, so he, the humans made it a final settlement. I think it was the Ebon Hawk with the Ebon Vanguard, and that's. What, what was it in Guild Wars 1? I thought it was just like an, an outpost or something. Oh, was it, it like a city? Even, or? It's not even it wasn't yet. in yeah, the game. The, game yet. the thing is, the, the reason that it's uh, said, that Noob said it was set up at the end is that if you follow some of the Guild Wars Beyond stuff with uh, Gwen, which Gwen is probably my favorite character in all of Guild really? Wars 4. Really? She's saying. angsty, man. Yeah. Do you like your girls no, that way? You're a pedophile. Her, no, Gwen her, is 12 just years her old. story's interesting. Gwen and I of the North is older. She just gets married. Oh, Come on now. Sure. Anyway. Um, no, because actually she, I guess, is credited with founding Ebonhawk. Yeah, she founds Ebonhawk, Ebonhawk in, and then it, it becomes like... So, yeah. And, and she is like, like the great, was, great, great, great off. of Logan Thackeray. Yeah, exactly. So Gwen yep. is like one of the first uh, NPCs your character meets in the first Guild Wars, if you... Which is why I think she's such a great character, because she's such a nondescript, like, young little girl, and then it turns out she's super, super important. I think that's like the opposite of awesome. I think that's like the absolute opposite of awesome. When... And also the fact that she killed everyone at the start of the first Guild Wars beta. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, oh, God. I don't remember. Like, 
Gwen, her last name is Thackeray. Um, she marries this dude. That's how she gets the last name. So that's an original last name. But either way, um, I hate it when uh, this is a complete aside because I want to talk about Edmund Hawke itself. But I hate it when any any game or any type of fiction links things as obscure as that. And I feel like Arena is like one of the biggest advocates of of doing those like dredging oh, back. Yeah. That's why I like this. That's why I like it. Like, yeah, I hate that. The leader of the vigil is the descendant <laughs> of um, the char guy. In I think it's it's like it's so creatively bankrupt, in my opinion. <laughs> like seriously, well, you also like the Azura, so your opinions oh, are. Oh, okay. <laughs> let's not have this conversation before one yeah, of us this gets is, kicked out. No, of the exactly, well, and it will be extent, Shinboy. It'll be Shinboy. To some extent, it's something they kind of need to do to like, I guess, validate to you know Guild Wars one players like this is see this is the same world like. Yeah. Just by saying, "Hey, this is you know, this is Ascalon, or but, this is you know, Tyria." Um, but it isn't just that. It's it's not just saying, "Hey, see, this is the same world." It's it's, "Hey, see, this is the same world" with like giant neon arrows pointing towards last names. And stuff. <laughs> it's kind of, I, I think it's dumb. Like I didn't even well, realize that last name was about, Especially when you're talking about a world that like it takes place. What is it? Two hundred and fifty years after the one that you guys have played in all these years. Like, yeah, that's the only. Uh, in order for you to really feel like this is the same world and that they've really sold it, like there needs to be some familiarity there. Right, and it's not like it's it's just the last name drop. And for people who aren't following Guild Wars that much, and like you, you probably yeah, I didn't, I didn't know, even realize. Yeah, right. Like it's just like, hey, look, they're related. That's yeah. like a cool little yeah, Easter like, egg. Because like Logan Thackeray, like he, if you don't really pay attention to the Guild Wars one yeah. lore, from what I've seen so far of the human stuff in Guild Wars two. Like if you don't know that, they don't really. No, show like this is the first I'd heard of that. I I literally had no idea that he was a descendant of somebody important from the first game. Again, I I wish play. I'd never found that up. I I wish I'd never found that up because it, to me it kind of breaks things. I I don't it like is, the fact that. I don't know. Well, the whole point of yeah, that is a no, it's nice. The, the whole point like of that is the whole point of that is a to nod link. to the the players of the first game that really followed the lore. That was the whole point of it. You weren't one of those players, yes. so it wasn't really something they put in there for, for a player like you. It was something they put in there for a player like Noob. It wasn't made for you, asshole. It's for me. It's, for me. <laughs> it's, it's an Easter egg. It it's an Easter egg. To some extent, uh, and, yeah. I, I guess, yeah. I'm pretty sure that Queen Jenna is also a descendant oh, yeah. of Adelburn and thus Rurik. No, 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 not Adelburn. She's, she's the descendant of the, the Shining Blade Queen. What's her face? No, no, no. I thought I thought it had to do because I was reading today about I was going real deep reading about oh, Magdare right. and Sohothin and all God. this nonsense um, about how like only a, a true descendant could like come back and like stop the ghosts in Ascalon and Queen Jenna was one of those descendants. Yeah. I don't know. I was reading that on the wiki. That Jenna was a different line and she was like the queen of Krita because she was from Krita and not Ascalon. I don't know. Well, you also have to think there was the mass exodus from Ascon into Crime. Yeah, but let's not, do, let's not get further into this. Let's, yeah, let's, let's, yeah, let's, yeah, let's, let's stop. <laughs> exactly. But I, I, first, I want to just apologize here. Um, I, may, some people may have noted that I have a little bit of a negative opinion of the Guild Wars lore nowadays. Uh, I've pointed towards Wooden Potatoes videos quite frequently, and I actually really love them. Um, he does a fantastic job of covering the lore in Guild Wars 2. That's so youtube.com forward slash Wooden Potatoes. Um, but he has done a successful job of convincing me that I don't give a flying F about Guild Wars lore. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, it's, it's really interesting, but... Get out. Just get out. <laughs> <laughs> the f- doors then right why there. Are you even here? <laughs> <laughs> like the, the the fact that I played Guild Wars One and didn't know any of that kind of indicates, t- and the fact that playing Guild Wars Two, I'm kind of playing it the same way as I did Guild Wars One, just for like the combat and all the other stuff, kind of means to me that I'm just not a lore guy. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Well, like the thing, the th- Arena Net's biggest problem with that is that while they do have really interesting lore, the first game, at least, like I said, I haven't really done much of the personal story stuff in two. The first game was really, really bad at telling yeah, you the story. Definitely. Yeah. There well, you can say it was glitches. It was really cheesy. <laughs> it was really chilly. It was really like, cheesy. North was As in a person who has done the personal story, I definitely feel they've made a complete improvement, especially oh yeah, the art definitely. and everything. Like for example, in the first Guild Wars War, in Guild Wars One, um, there's a, the in the Eye of the North. There's the Norn female hero. I forgot what her name was. Um, Jorah. 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 I, I, 
Yeah, and you fight the original Svanir um, as part of your Eye of the North story. And part of that is, like, straight up, the, the final cutscene of her confrontation with Svanir has this, like, really terrible 80s-style cut between their faces. And she's doing, like, a, a <laughs> she's doing, like, a, I'm going to kill your face. And he's, going, and he's like, I'm a bear. And then it just cuts back and forth to them. And then she runs into him and hits him a couple times. Like, the worst cinematography I've ever seen in a game but to be fair i haven't it's funny because they had to use all the in-game animations <laughs> yeah oh, which is oh, really like they didn't even anyway they didn't even like go up go back and manually custom and animations no 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 like oh, so like if you're like in a in a cutscene, like an npc is trying to signal signal another one over he just does the slash wave oh. animation so that's one thing like wow for the longest time did not have anything that resembled cutscenes. It wasn't until yeah. the most recent, or not the most recent, uh, Wrath of the well, Lich Warcraft expansion. Warcraft 3 had a lot of cutscenes. Yeah, but that was all the stuff done. Cinematic, kind of, he's same, not talking about idea. cinematics. I'm, I'm, no, no, I'm, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about like they zoomed in to the ground. Yeah. And they showed people's faces. Uh, really low I don't resolution. remember that. I don't remember that. No? But, but remember in, that. WoW, in, yeah, in no. Wrath of the Lich King, they, they did do like a proper, um, not, not really like, I guess a, a sort of cutscene, but in like an in-engine one. Uh, where they did like custom animation stuff and like moved mouths when they talked and, but it was it's it, at the same time I almost wish they hadn't because while in some respects it was neat they you know went that direction and, and put that production value in there, but on the other hand, those models don't look very good, <laughs> and when you start doing real real close <laughs> yeah. up on those faces, it looks like fucking ass. <laughs> Hey guys, you know what looks pretty good? Ebonhawk. Oh, yeah. yeah, thank uh, you. I, I was gonna say, but we kind of have to round that out and actually talk about Guild Wars too. Um, so Ebonhawk. Well, first of all, like that we don't see that many of those problems repeating themselves in Guild Wars two. Let's just say that first and foremost. Um, the storytelling seems to be significantly improved. I'm still not too big a fan of it, but whatever. Um, Ebonhawk, which was shown in these videos. You're the anime fan. Yeah, I am. Anyway, um, continue. which shown in these videos looks absolutely spectacular. I don't actually want to describe it. I'm going to leave it up to you as the listeners to seek out the video for yourself There's if you want to see it. There's a giant dragon that destroys Evan. Okay, all I'm going to say cool. about the, all I'm going to say about the looks of it is that the concept art of the gates that came out a while ago gave me one image of it and Did it live up to the it? The book? No, no, what the which book was it? Ghost of one of those bad probably books. Ghost oh, uh, it um, should be it should probably be the second one, Edge of Destiny. It was yeah, because they had to reopen the Actually no, the first anyway, one. Both anyway, of them Anyway, the one where they actually have to like protect it, it made it seem like it looked completely different. Like when I first saw that concept art, I was like, "What the hell city is this?" And I'm not going to say which one it looks like more, like which mental image it looks like more. I'm just saying I'm very happy with what it looks like. It looks absolutely spectacular, in my opinion. Yeah, it looks stunning to the point where I don't. Yeah, I'd recommend for you listeners. The game's only three weeks out now. Wow, it's only three weeks out, and so don't, 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 don't use your self control. I want to put this out there for the people who don't have self control, just don't care. Um, but for those who do have self control. Like Nubarama, um, don't watch it. I'd, I'd say it looks amazing. And w- but if see you're it like me, you've probably already seen it. Yeah, or you're or you're watching it as you're listening to this podcast and yelling at Cynic. <laughs> like, What's your problem? <laughs> um, but yeah, let's just say we're all impressed. Nub- Durin, as a person who didn't uh, have any background in Ebon Hawk from Girls One, how did you find the city? Don't don't describe it. But were you impressed by it, or did you like what you saw? Or yeah, the city looked really cool. Um, the, uh, the the video again i'm not going to go into detail or anything but like the video they showed uh, cuz they showed the, the city at the very very tail end of it um yeah, but before that the they, plains of desolation yeah before that they showed the the, yeah. the fields of desolation and that area i was kind of not as big on it like, looks like fields yeah, yeah it, it looks like very it's basically it's like a field full of desolation right and i think that's a pretty easy mental <laughs> well i i think to, the, the problem i had it. with it is i i, I was really kind of hoping we would get some good change of scenery as we moved kind of up you know through the different zones as you as you leveled and that place totally looks a lot like the human area with maybe a little bit darker skybox and i just yeah. i'm a little disappointed about that like i'm i'm i'm, I'm hoping that maybe we're not there for very long and that you maybe moves to a cooler area or maybe they just showed like the most boring part of it part of it yeah because it's a i think i have i have a feeling that they only showed like a small little yeah. section of it and it's a much bigger area than that but, yeah uh, I'm, I'm real hopeful because that looks very very generic but to some extent yeah, it's that's what a 10 uh, a 10 level area it's what 30 to yeah. 40 oh, fuck. so you could spend what 15 hours uh, there? yeah like it better be well, more diverse too bad i'm, I'm- I like grinding, so it's okay. <laughs> but like to some extent, it's 
kind of good in a way. And, and let me justify that because um, when you move from the sh- from the Norn area to the Char area, right, uh, you're moving from the mountains down to the plains, and you can kind of just like literally as you get to walking near the waypoint of one section and exiting the waypoint of the other section, you can feel the transition period between snow-capped mountains and desolate plains. Yeah. Like you kind of feel that. Um, same with moving from the Asura zone to the Silvari zone. You can feel the jungle changing as you move between the two zones. Yeah. I'm hoping that what they showed here, because they did a uh, state, I believe they entered it from, um, I think it was the south of the the... Norn area, or maybe so. I may, I'm, I'm, I'm misplacing it, but either way, they're entering it from an area which I remembered being a grassy kind of plain, and it would be weird seeing how how well stitched together the other areas are if you go from grassy plain to craggy desolation, right? Yeah, like, it, it would be weird if it was like that sharper drop. So I can kind of respect the fact that it was, it wasn't like a direct, but like a, a huge jump between what we've experienced before and what we see in these planes, which means like the first half of the video, I'd pro- I probably wouldn't mind checking out for most people out there. Um, don't watch it though, because you, you will stay to the end and you'll spoil for yourself. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty short video. It's yeah, like it's like three, four, four minutes. minutes. But um, so it, like it feels like it's a progression to the point where I think that the zone after that is probably going to be more indicative of the name of field desolation it's kind of weird that they use that name for such like a because it transitions so well it doesn't actually look really desolated there's still trees there there's still grass for example like you know um anyway so that's that uh, check it out if you want to we're moving to the next uh news topic here and hey arena announced the final stress test sorry guys yeah. it's already over what wait <laughs> what what <laughs> yes no <laughs> <laughs> sorry you missed it if you didn't know yeah, they- the way I found out about that stress test was I was just on Facebook, and it's like 35 minutes ago. Stress test tomorrow. That was literally the post. And yep, then I told that's, Dorian, that's and I'm all like, they did. you know there's a stress test tomorrow? And he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and okay, so you guys, the listeners to this podcast, aside from deep revelations from today's episode, doesn't really know Noob, right? Noob as a person, as a being. <laughs> when when the Noob comes up to me. Noob. I'm not sure I want to know. <laughs> you don't. You know, I'm, after I'm today's naked discussion, right now. when Noob walks up to you and says, hey, good news, and says anything, anything comes out of his face, <laughs> your immediately, your immediate Doubtful. reaction is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> you are lying. I, he once told I, me, I think it was about point. a week and a half ago, that Guild Wars 2 was uh, being uh, delayed. <laughs> and I'm, I, I'm pretty sure I might have threatened his life if he was lying. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've multiple times told people um, there's a beta weekend going on. Have you, you noticed? And then they've launched Guild Wars. <laughs> oh, it's, it's not working. And I'm like, oh, dude, it must. the servers must be packed. I'm like, oh, crap. And then they go on for like a couple of minutes. And I tell them, I'm oh, just God. kidding. I'm not the playing biggest Wars, fucking so troll. Oh, I hate you so much. So it's, so it's bled over to the point where when Durian told me that the <laughs> thing was on yesterday, I didn't believe it. <laughs> That's I've how deep this has gone. I'll, I'll just say... Did I'll, you I'll, hear that from me? I was trying to convince people that, that I, was, I was Korean on Mumble, and then people were like, no way, I'm not going to fall for that. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so like I, I had to check, and the only reason I realized it was on is because I checked Girl was Two Guru, Guru, and it was on the front page. Um, but I checked like the blog. I don't believe that they put it in the blog. Like I don't think they used, released it to most of their. No, it just sort of showed up on yeah. Facebook. Yeah, and it's just like yeah, this is tomorrow. Yeah, BT Dubs. Because it's an interesting point that ArenaNet has launched a new website as well. Like it's an addendum to this. Like they they have a new fancy Girl was Two website, which I actually think doesn't look as good as the old one personally. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it, it kind of moved from an interesting website design, which is different from every other MMO, to something that looks very similar to how Bioware sets out their websites, in my opinion, with, like, the top bar and, like, the... But anyway, like, they didn't even announce it on there. Like, a lot of people felt burned because they literally announced this stress test the day before you it happened. You did not miss much. You did not miss much. I think you missed a lot. <laughs> I don't think you missed much. Um, well, new. I disconnected a whole bunch of times. It was great. Really? Okay, let's let's, let's move, roll through everyone's opinion. I, well, me and Duren will go last because I think we had the best experience of us. But new Barama, what was your experience with this stress test? Um, so everyone was on Mumble. It was quite crowded, and we what were, we were talking about the correct vocabulary between British and English, and we all get in Guild Wars, and then we spawn, and then it was completely empty for me. And then I ran ran around until I found Shinboy. And then we ran around together, 
and then I decided to make a new character, and the game stopped working, so I just stopped playing. <laughs> it's so sad hearing new... Like, every time something ha- nice happens, like, it's kind of like karma. Coming before what I just said, I didn't mean to go there. <laughs> nice things don't happen to new. New, new no. gets something nice and then ruins it for himself, or <laughs> it just doesn't work for him. I love it. It's kind of good. I'm telling you, when StarCraft II came out, I, I was sitting, installing the game, and then I went on Wikipedia and found out the ending of that game. God damn it, you. <sighs> to be fair, most people don't buy StarCraft for the story. So I, like, okay, before I, we go any further here, Shin I still Boy. haven't finished it yet, so let's move on. Shin Boy. I haven't finished it either. What was your experience uh-huh. with this beat of a event? Don't talk about the PvP stuff, just well, the, the start of it. Where you, you took you a while to get in. I think it was. No, I got in okay. right away. Just run me through it. I, did, I, just, I just couldn't get it on Mumble because I didn't have my okay. Um So I spawned. And like two seconds later, Noob ran up to me and started yelling at me not to run away. Because <laughs> he was behind me, so I didn't see him. So I just started running, like killing things, because I like almost had the last skill unlocked for Rifle Warrior. Hey. So like I pretty much unlocked that while me and Noob were running around. I dinged to level 7, started messing with like swip- uh, swapping weapon sets, and then just PvP'd for the rest of the time. <laughs> Hell yeah. Until I got disconnected and decided to order pizza. Aww. Was that what happened? I guess I feel like my bad uh, yeah. luck rubbed off while we. I was upset because like, I was, <laughs> I was playing like um, this was before I started playing with you guys because I wasn't on Mumble, so I didn't know what you were doing. Um, I was had this necro that I was just dominating. I killed him one on one like three or four times in a row, <laughs> and he was running towards me. I'm like, oh yeah, he's back for more, and then I disconnected. Aww. I was so upset. Aww. Man. But um, yeah. So th- that that brings us to me and Duran. I'll I'll, I'll let I'll do my little. St- stint first and then let Durin take the rest of it um so every time i launch into any of these stress tests and um beta events pretty much the first thing i do is jump onto a warrior or make a warrior of the like the time they reset go straight to the pvp aisles go all the way up to the merchants open my tabs and then just sit there reading traits for like <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's that's the worst part i did that too he spends the entire time, time that the game so is not available play guild wars you well no <laughs> he spends the entire time that the game is not available theory crafting builds so that he can check them out when the game comes out or when the game is able to be played <laughs> and then when he's given a four hour opportunity to test some of those uh, theory crafted builds he decides he wants to spend that entire time theory crafting in the game so I, I woke up. What are you going to do when, when the game's was, out and you when find When there was an hour goals? left of, of the, the stress test, he wanted to drop out of the PvP that we were doing so that he can go read up on stuff for his builds. Yeah, totally. I'm like, you're going to be that person me. who's like, you've, the, all the builds have been found, there's nothing else to find. It's like, I'm not playing Guild Wars. <laughs> <laughs> like, you found the perfect... Like, no, you found it, the perfect build, matter. right? You've, there was an hour right, left. You found the perfect build, and you're like, okay, I can't wait to use it. And then you realize the emptiness that has been created. <laughs> well, so, okay, so every time I jump into these, right, I jump in, I jump early owls, I check all the merchants to see if any of the armor has changed or the um, amulets have changed or the ins- the insignias, sorry, sigils have changed for the weapons, which I did this time and there didn't seem to be too many changes there. And then I open the warrior trait lists and read through all of them. There's like been one major change. Um, the point I'm bringing across there is like, yes, that's what I do. I also take out the longbow to see if they fixed that and they haven't. It's still a shitty conditions weapon I don't like. Anyway, so there have been a bunch of changes for all of the classes for this beta. Um, so, sorry, for this, uh, beta stress test. Uh, but I won't be covering them in this episode. I, and we chose not to cover them this episode because it, it feels like there's a lot of transition happening between the build we played in Beta Weekend 3 and release. Like, if you look at Guild Wars 2 Guru, they have a, a pretty decent... It's not entirely inclusive. Like, some of the comments definitely go a bit deeper. But there's a, a pretty decent list of all the current known uh, trait changes from stress tests. From Beta Weekend 3 to the stress test. And there's a bunch of changes to Necromancer, uh, definitely some really important ones to Ranger, and stuff like that. But I, I don't really want to cover them because everything's in flux. Oh, really? Well, they, well, do you know like just one important one for the Ranger? The most important Ranger? one oh, for Ranger you. makes me kind of want to play Ranger instead of Warrior. Oh, good, because I enjoyed Ranger in Beta Weekend um, 3. I can only imagine. So, ra- well, it's it doesn't sound like much, but it's a big deal. Um, Longbow now has a trait which reduces the recharges by 20%. Ooh. And it applies to short bows as well. So it's a bow trait. <laughs> it is. So that means you could like, I forgot what it's You can rapid shot. One that you you can rapid with. shot one every eight seconds now. 
The, and also the one that shoots, uh, the, the one that you channel that shoots 12 shots, you can shoot that That's fast. the one. That's the one. Yeah, yeah it's rapid shot. shot, yeah. Oh, yep. is it? Okay. Yep. It shot. is. I'm thinking rapid shot is the really quick one. Uh, I might, I might be Was, getting it wrong. It might be multi shot. Anyway. I don't know. I don't know. They're, they the are, and it, it awesome. seemed like rifle was doing a little bit less damage, but I'm not certain. There's, yes, I agree. There's, a, there, there's, yeah, and that's really concerning to me because those two weapons were neck and neck back before because the, the longbow did more damage on the ranger, um, but had longer recharges and the rifle did only a little bit less, but had shorter recharges. But now rifle's doing less damage and has the same recharges as the longbow. It's, Anyway, it's, the game's not released yet, but I might play Ranger as my main, which is kind of scary because that, that was never an option before. It was always going to be like a second or third roll. But I, dude, I, rifle's awesome. But if you're gonna fuck I mean, it, you can, you can still roll. You can still roll Warrior as your main PVE and just make a Ranger. Uh, main. No, I, I, <laughs> no. Talk about a PVE <laughs> character for Cynic. The the the, ra- uh, that's true. the range. Like the reason I love Rifle Warrior is that style of play. And if I can get that style of play, but be even more effective by playing Ranger, then I'll play that. That's, it's as simple as that. But will the Ranger have the survivability of yeah, the Yeah, but they, their survivability is more like the dodge kind of survivability than the tank kind of survivability. Yeah. It's interesting. Anyway. Just nom, nom nomming damage. That's where it's at. Yeah, it's kind of... Dude, yeah, you, you played a build Rifle Warrior. It, you're kind of like a ranged tank when you're using the rifle. And then you can switch to the, the axe and do just as, even more damage. And, and it's amazing. The Viscerate's great. Viscerate's great. Durin... How was yes. your experience <laughs> with the beta weekend event? And, and this kind of ties into both me and Shin Boys, so I'll let you do your spiel. My experience was not what I had planned. My, my, my original plan actually was to play a warrior, um, because at the very end of the last beta weekend, I messed around a little bit with a great sword and thought it was fucking awesome and wanted to make a build around that. So in the, the meantime between that and the stress test, uh, you and I had come up with a, um, what seemed to be a pretty good, uh, great sword sword shield um build yeah Though you talked about well, possibly might be mace. mace might be mace well, yeah you talked about yeah. possibly doing mace as well i think that that just comes down to play style more than anything um yeah. but i decided um right before the stress test like i wanted to also check out ellie a little bit more uh we'd come up with a uh dagger dagger build um that i i, I in beta weekend three i tried to do a conditioned dagger build didn't really work out as well as i'd hoped uh so i decided to go for kind of a, a crit based burst damage build instead um, and so I decided that since I was familiar with that class, um, and just needed to kind of get familiar with the build that I would do that one first, probably wouldn't take me very long and that I could just hop over and spend the rest of the time on the warrior. Mm-hmm. And instead I ended up spending the entire four hours on my elementalist because <laughs> one, it, you know, I'm absolutely convinced elementalist is, is going to be my main, uh, come launch. Um, but also because that build is hard as shit to learn. Um, and I started off real bad, nearly gave up on the build. Um, and then eventually, you know, over time got a little bit better with it, got more comfortable with it. Remember to dodge for that, because that is a key, key component of the build to stay alive. Yeah, um, and, absolutely. And, and basically kind of found out at the very end, like, first off, I love this thing. It's, it's a really hard build to pull off, but, um, it does a lot of damage and can be really annoying for people. Um, yeah, so it's just to outline it in like a single statement, say double daggers, high crit, um, lo- high dodge with constant vigor build. One of those. Yeah, uh, we're, we're yeah. kind of a focus on stacking vulnerability um, and then boosting. Yeah. Um, it, but the one thing I noticed kind of after the, the stress test was like my top three, three uh, characters I, I had planned going into launch were uh, an elementalist, a thief, and a warrior. Um, however, the way this build plays... Is actually very similar to a the style of like a dagger thief. Um, yeah, very heavy melee, heavy burst, heavy dodge, um, and so it kind of nudged. Like it, it felt redundant having a thief as one of my top classes as well, since that would that was actually my plan for the thief as well was a dagger dagger. Um, so it kind of nudged that out and knocked Necro back up to my top three again. Yeah, and we'll talk more about the interplay between those classes later in the episode. But I, I yeah, it, it's it, the context of this was, and the reason he was able to get this much playtesting in was, um, what we what happened except for Noob, who's a, a loser and a PvP nut, uh, PVE nut. Sorry, I'm um, not a PvP nut. Shut your. You're face. not a PvP nut. That's the problem. I'm so, so offended right now. He's an anime nut. We, yeah, he's an anime nut. Little girl anime. Anyway. <laughs> Um, so we have, we had a situation where child enthusiasts, the guild system. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, good God. Um, oh, good God. <laughs> this episode, that this was episode. Anyway, 
Um, so we had an experience where the guild system wasn't really working. Like, this is, without a doubt, the most broken I've ever seen Guild Wars 2. Oh, the guild system was fucked. That was The terrible. guild system was fucked. Like, they were, t- they were going through... Like, you can clear that it's a work in progress, like, a, a quick work in progress, because, like, it was, isn't something to be scared about. They, we can see why it was broken, because they just changed how they were doing tooltips. Um, so you can see a bunch of changes within that, and, and some improvements as well. And they were changing how they were displaying the, um, the range finding on your skill bar as well. Like, there's some changes there. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, um, so there was a bunch of things there that were obviously work in progress um some of the like uh in the pvp aisle some of the ai was responding at weird rates and stuff like that um but aside from that like yeah the, the, the guild system was broken and just, like moving around was broken the server went down once um some of us had disconnection issues nubarama had a huge lag issues i think it was um i even got a problem where i created a new character and i was greeted with a black screen and i couldn't skip this intro like just nothing happened. Yeah. But I, I'd say is isn't probably something to be particularly scared of because yeah, they... They specifically said there will be a lot yeah, of problems yeah. with this one. And I will say, yeah. I will say too... I also think it's telling. Okay. I, I was going to say, I will say that um, for, for somebody that didn't really have any problems, I had one disconnect, um, like one unannounced disconnect. Uh, during one of the, our PvP matches, but other than that, it was pretty you know, solid all the way through. One thing, I, one thing I did absolutely notice is this was by far the most um, optimized they have. Oh yeah, clearly even even way above and beyond what um, Beta Weekend Three was. I was able. Oh yeah, it was running. Yeah, I was able to knock this too. thing up to absolute max settings. I did turn off uh, the HD player textures game because I did have an, a memory leak issue with that in the past. Um, but aside from that, like turned it all the way up and just ran flawlessly. So uh, yeah, they, they definitely it, it was a weird disparity of like. UI elements being broken, but the game running really well. It, w- it was interesting, but yeah, it's, it's not something to be concerned yeah, about. But what I was going to say is that, like, you know, the guild system was broken, but they fixed it like yeah. an hour or so in. Yeah. And, like, it's, it was all this really minor stuff. And if that's the most broken any of us have seen the game, that's, <laughs> that's a very good point. Yeah. That, that was straight up the most broken I've ever seen it. And it wasn't actually that broken. It was broken. I think, and I think a lot yeah, of like it, everything, oh, all of the major things that are broken. Well, I think, I think some of it was broken on purpose, too, it seemed like, because they fixed it with, with that reset. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, because the guild chat and everything started working again. Yeah. I mean, did you try it again yeah. after the reset, uh, yeah. noob? It worked just fine. Oh, yeah. uh, no, I, w- I went back to doing my thing. Oh, Doing his thing. <laughs> my thing. <sighs> did your thing involve that lion No, it girl, involved maybe, pictures by any chance? people. Anyway, so <laughs> all right, that's, the that's context of Durin's ex- little experiment was, um, so our, our guild's because we couldn't really communicate with each other in any other way, everyone who was on the mumble pretty much just went straight to the PvP aisles um, and just like congregated there. And then we did what I think is probably the most fun thing you can do with a small group of people, uh, even beyond uh, some elements of World versus World, is like you you go to the the PvP server browser, you pick the one with which is zero, and everyone just dumps into that, and then you have a sweet guild like almost like a te- 8v8 guild only kind of thing it was awesome it was yeah fantastic. i wasn't even on mumble when i was having a real good time yeah, so much exactly. fun. It, it was it was I awesome but i like how it sort of turned out like time. we sort of had an a team and a b team <laughs> <this kind of laughs> thing. i i think i was the a team <laughs> yeah that's right i'm gonna say that out there <laughs> well like after after a few auto balances when like the randoms here like left, yeah it was like when i started playing there was like four guildies on one team and then it was like durin you it was you and like like one other person on the other team. And I remember one game in particular, you guys were up like it was on the forest map. It was like four seventy four and we had like four forty and someone in guild chat was like, Yes, we finally beat these guys and then we wiped your whole team, took all three teams. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, that was well, it was, it was awesome because it, it kind of justified the feeling it had going into it, which was that um and I don't want to go too much into this because obviously a bunch of the listeners aren't from our guild but um definitely like the guys in our guild i could i could even even the i, think, I forgot who it was i'm really sorry i forgot who it was but there's one of our listeners was also with us and a new member to the guild was also with us i really apologize um but he, he joined uh, with Salon us Dante. and so on dante yeah he was cool <laughs> um he joined with us and he, he was like his sir. he wasn't silent i thought he would be silent but he talked which is better he talked, he talked like <laughs> once but after that he didn't quite he was fairly talk silent. too much but yeah, he was fairly, he lived up to his name. Um, but he jumped in for the first, like one of his first times in PvP and he did a great job. Like we, we, I, I felt like our players were quite good 
and I, I very much like that coming into the, the actual release because it sounds like um, joining Lincoln Forest is awesome. But either way, so what we d- what we found was like, if you have like a, a bunch of people together playing in structured PvP, friends versing one another, it is possibly the funnest thing you can do because you know like the relative skill quality of the people on the other side, you, you kind of develop instantaneous rivalries. Like Benny plays an amazing okay. necromat. So not necromat, um, Me- yes, right. Mesmer. He plays an amazing Mesmer and Chav plays an amazing necromancer. And every Those time anyone, anyone, oh man. Yeah. That was like, that, anytime- I, I think that was at least part of the reason why my team kept losing a lot was because I wasn't even focusing on points. My goal was to kill those two <laughs> one one Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, because they, they were essentially both playing immovable wall builds, pretty much. Like, Benny could kind of assault and so could Chev, but when they stood on a point, you did not want to mess with them unless you had backup. Like, Long One, Asura, As- Asari? Asari? Long One, Asari, I guess. Yeah. Subjugation. Um, and you were the pretty much the strike team of your of your side pretty of it, much, and yeah. just like running into points. I just it, you, oh, you man, probably, Benny taking the trebuchet was the worst thing. <laughs> Knowing that he was on the trebuchet, pretty much, I was like, "Well, I guess they're gonna have a treb for this round." Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'm happy that we had the treb for that round. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, it's I, 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 it's, it comes into um, what, what it brings into focus is some of the things that are missing. Obviously, um, we would love for. Arena has confirmed that they're going to be working on what was it? Uh, I think Benny brought it up. He was in the chat earlier. There's a going to be hopefully a rented kind of server system where your guild can kind of have a PvP server, um, maybe a pug server. We don't know if it's five v five or going to be eight v eight or ten v ten. I've forgotten the actual numbers are um, for your guild, so you guys can jump in and have like custom matches like that. And that, that was that's probably one of the great biggest thing on my wish list for guilds too is to have those like custom matches and like those kind of options for the structure why don't we have a guild hall yeah but it, i don't know uh, i have a question about like the renting a server do you guys think they'll do it with like in-game money or i could see, I could see or, them doing gyms. what i can see i can see them doing I, I influence see it being a, gym, a gym thing i just want to guild hall and people can come i don't know i don't know about influence cynic because then it might not just be guild then you could just have it for like friends that are well and not just that but the the thing too is that that, um you know you have to look at it from a a money standpoint and server maintenance does cost money and so doing something like a you know gym purchase for it or gym maintenance or whatever like like keeping it up that way um makes a lot more sense for them to one you know make it a profitable thing but also to just to make sure they're not just bleeding money on every single guild in the game having a um, private PvP server. Yeah, but they have to. I think they have to watch with their pricing because I think they have to put it at a price where a guild that is can buy with gold and has an active player base. Yeah, can buy it. Can all pitch in. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the, that's where the gem store comes into the light in its best ways is that if they do make it a gem store thing, then a guild like ours can just like, you know, have a pitch in system and we can buy it with in-game gold. And right. Have that uh, well, and, and if you're talking about a server that probably holds a max of, you know, maybe what upwards of 10 V 10. So 20 people yeah. like that doesn't require people. a ton of maintenance. So I could see it being a fairly um, reasonable price. Yeah. But if, when they put that in, yeah, but you have to think if it's like a one-time fee or if it's like per X amount of time, I think it's going to be an X amount of time. I, I think it would that. have to be, it, they would probably do it. Like, you know, you pay X amount for it and it's good for, you know, maybe three months or something. It's probably one month. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's probably one month. New Brahma, the doubter. I know. <laughs> I, I totally, I kind of agree. I kind of agree. It'll be one month, but either way I can, I can say I that to round out that topic to make it gems. You what would you? What, you what's what's your opinion? Well, I don't. I don't think it's a good idea, well, I don't, I don't gems, a good idea of making gems because, again, like like you suggested, we can just making it a pitching system, and ArenaNet doesn't get any actual money. No, that's the thing. Um, you keep you keep saying that, and I keep trying to let tell you those gems have to come from from somewhere. And if, even if you're pitching in gold to buy the gems, somebody had to purchase those gems with real money. Right, but just because somebody had to purchase those gems, ArenaNet already got that money from someone having to purchase those gems. If we buy servers, that doesn't mean Arena Net's going to get. That wait a money second. Yet. Wait a second. Are, are you wait, saying that you are you saying you want them? Yeah, you want them to be paid twice. Yeah. Are you saying that you want them to have to make us pay real dollars to have custom no, matches? Saying, are you if, fucking serious? If they, if, if, okay, like, so if they, noob's going to foot the bill for the people. <laughs> <Yeah. server. laughs> no, no, the no, 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 no. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, if they want to stop earn buying anime figurines, this, you need to and, buy our server. And, like Cynic said, not bleed money for hosting servers. I think 
they should probably charge people. I, th- I think I think noob. I think you have a misunderstanding of how the gym, the the whole gold gym and gym money system works. Because even this is that, the second time yeah, they, don't, you, they don't just make the gym. Well, this is yeah. Nowhere. This is the second time that you you've been against them doing something with the gym system because they don't make money off of it and they absolutely make money off of it, regardless of whether they're making money off of it at the time of the server rental or six months earlier when the person who originally purchased those gyms bought them and then you know later on decided to sell them for gold. They're still making the money on it. Because the thing is, like you say, that they're not making the money on it, on it, you know, with that because of those gyms or whatever. But like those right, gyms would have those gyms would have been purchased. The money elsewhere. they could have made. Yes, they are. Right, but because they're those, not making money twice. Why should they make money twice? Why should we have to pay twice for it? Money? I I think the well, I, the I, I greater think concern from, here from a consumer standpoint. the greater concern here by a significant margin is that ArenaNet has been pretty good about what they've been putting on that gem gem service, mm-hmm. right? You know, they have having stuff like cosmetic, pretty much entirely cosmetic only. Maybe a couple of XP boosters in there, but they're only like very small or minor. Yeah. Um, if they're charging for something that I consider as a basic feature, something that really mm. should be in any of these games, huh. no, custom ser- custom server matching for a guild or any form of PvP, oh, yeah, that, I'm, I'm, I think it's like a basic like, feature. But I'm saying like a pub server, like where people can hop on and join like a Counter-Strike server kind of thing. No, oh, that's that's people. if it's like a, a a multi multi server like right right like hundred v hundred or like hundred ten sets of ten. Okay, well I guess that's right, different. Right, right, right. That's not really what I'm asking for. Okay, I'm asking I, for like literally just having one. I guess like, I guess first like, off, did that exist in Guild Wars One? Yes. As a what guild what is a uh, personal guild server that you mm, can use to go in and I guess well, maybe that's spar basically with what the guild they hall weren't is. okay. Well, Guild Hall, I think I believe that's something they have talked about doing in the future. They just aren't doing it yet, right? Well, the thing is, the thing is with the private matches and that they were private GVGs yeah. and GVG doesn't exist. Okay. Yeah, but well, no, they, probably, they didn't necessarily have to be GVGs. They could be scripts. The, 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 yeah, right. The, well, no, but it was all a GVG but, yeah, format. Exactly. The, the reason, I, the reason I ask is because Cynic, you're saying that it's a a core function that has to exist in the game. It was, but the thing is that this is something that has never existed in an MMO before. There is no such thing as an, in an MMO of a private server that only your guild can use that you can hop in and PvP with each other. So, but it isn't it isn't yeah, like a shooter. vast server. It is a single kind of PvP lobby, which existed in the first Guild Wars. Like it happened. We had scrimmaging. We had guilds capable yeah. of going in and having entirely structured guild internal guild battles on the most popular PvP format, GVG, or, or at least in the competitive scene for Guild Wars One. HA man. F- fuck HA. <laughs> right. and, and I feel I feel like yeah. instance. Like it, it's no difference from one person leaving into an instance area in a party that that scrim match. So I don't think there would be that much of a server load. To no, have, you know, it is literally only twenty people. It's only twenty people. Right. Um, no, I don't think it's gonna be a big server load. I just say I just think saying that it is a a basic feature of the of, of for Guild Wars One guys. It is. I, I it think is. that's going a bit far. Oh, like, well, not for an MMO, but for Guild Wars. About, like, right, but Guild Wars Two is an MMO. Guild Wars Two is not Guild Wars. Server, I think they should charge people. I think, I think you're talking about what you're talking about. I, I think that's that the. Definitely be I think that's the biggest difference is that you, Guild Wars Two is not Guild Wars. Guild Wars Two is an MMO, and that is not a feature that is standard in an MMO. If we, if that if those are the ha- standards we're setting ourselves to, that's right. shit. That, those are shit standards. Hold on, I will I will bring up a point. Most of them most also don't have a server browser. True, I, I, I yeah, it's just That's, that was yeah. real weird. Like I don't know because it seems like it'd be a good idea to charge for it from a business standpoint. Right, that's I'm I'm not, I'm, I'm looking at the, I don't want that, they, but I think it's a better idea to have that. It should be it should be locked somehow. I, I think it should just be influence. Whether I, I don't, whether they I don't think it should be gemstone. if they add it to. It, well, with the influence, are they going to do guild halls by influence? I mean, not guild halls like, like purchase, you get a guild, guild hall, purchases, but it, yeah. Yeah, like a merchant and like materials people and karma vendors and all of that. Are they going to? Well, what they have at the moment is stuff like uh, guild banners you can get for influence, which you can drop. Did they uh, even say anything about guild hall? No, they they, they've said guild hall is is something they're considering as a post launch feature. They haven't confirmed it. So I think part of the the issue here, and I think we should probably move on um, before too much more (laughs) discussion because we're getting real deep into this. But I think that um, part of the issue here that that I'm looking at is I'm looking at like the long run when it comes to the gym store because like like you said yeah they basically have you know some cosmetic stuff and there are a lot of cosmetic stuff um, as well as a few you know smaller boosters and then of course the Mystic Keys. Um, however, like that stuff is only going to last so long and they can keep adding more cosmetic things, but at some point like with pretty much any other MMO, you know you have to start having paid for features paid for services like they already don't have paid character transfers though they do have paid i guess permanent character transfers although they haven't discussed i don't think pricing for that yet have they no 
Uh, well, I think it is. Uh, I think it was along the lines of it was like ten dollars or eight dollars. No, it was like fifteen dollars. It was like fifteen dollars. Okay. Yeah. Um. So like, aside from you know, like that's that's really about the only like paid for feature they really have. They don't have. There are no factions in this that's game, so there's no faction I change. Expansions and mini expansions and mini campaigns. Right, but that's but yeah, that's, that's also topic. that's not topic. That, yeah, that's off topic. But that, that's also assuming that that you know they can have those things done in time to continue profiting off of the gym store in the meanwhile. Um, and I feel like with the, what they currently have in the gym store, while a lot of it is really neat, I don't know that it's necessarily going to be enough in the long run to sustain uh, profitability for the game. I well, hope oh, that going back to this topic. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I want to round it out. Um, all of this is definitely conjecture in our parts, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I'm just going to say out there, as from my opinion, um, I hope that they can gain enough money through the current systems and their current business model without having to resort to that because they never did in the first Guild Wars. That's that's my only thing I have to say, really. Um, if they do, I, I won't, I won't doubt I don't them. Know. I, feel, I feel if they price it at like 800 gems, then a guild should be yeah. easily able to yeah. afford it and it won't yeah, be that's a big deal. That's what I, I say. Like, it doesn't require a lot of, of maintenance, so a very cheap price is very easy, I think, for them to do. Um, yeah. I, I don't think it's going to be a one-time thing. I think it really does have to be recurring, but even then, 800 Agreed. gems every three months is not a lot. Yeah. Um, and but and I've, I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah, but I will say I, that is absolutely minuscule. Yeah, exactly. Like it's not a big deal, yeah. but it at least does earn them some recurring money um, for for those guilds who are active and continuing to do that and want to have that luxury available to them. Yeah, or for guilds who don't want to pay for it for real dollars, they can have a gold system, like yeah. a, a, which is essentially the same thing as as an influence system would be a group contribution to a final end gold. So it's it's fine. Um, but if it's a large amount of money, that's a different story um anyway so moving to the next topic and probably that was the end of our news that there's not there wasn't too much news this week i guess we can all say we were well half of us had a really great time with that stress test but it's a stress <laughs> test it was four, it was four hours um it was, yeah, it was fun, fun. It was stressful <laughs> but the game is coming out in only three weeks now <laughs> so on the build-up to the game coming out we're going to be interested well trying out a new format uh tell me tell us if you hate it but i think it's actually pretty cool myself i hate it um well i hate you i already you hate it shit all right, we're, so, all, we're already in in the mood. I already hate it because I know this is going to go bad. The arguments <laughs> is where I like to be when it comes to podcasts because I think discussion is good. Um, so what we've decided to do is instead of doing a podcast where we all just sit here and regale you with why we think our particular choices are on, on the move up or for when, for when we're starting our Guild Wars 2 experience in three weeks' time. So, for example, my initial plans for this week was to do all of us just saying what our final choices for classes were. That's kind of boring, don't you think? So what we're doing instead... No, yes, fuck you, you're yeah. wrong. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm, is, I'm getting in. Right, according getting to my great. idea. The Great Guild Wars 2 debate, episode one. Uh, what, we're, what we're having is um, a discussion topic. Uh, we're all going to essentially voice our opinions strongly upon that discussion topic. And at the end, maybe come with a conclusion. Probably not. Um, and to this week's discussion topic is going to be... What class do we think people should start with? Now, and before we go into it, I, re- I really want to say that I... I know how this is going to go, so I'm not even going to try to remove well, cross talk. Like oh no, bit of I a, got a bit of a got an baseline. Ace in my like suit. these people, the person who are who are giving this recommendation. Oh no, no! Wait, what, before we get is, to that, before we get to that, I just want to say that I'm not going to try to remove cross talk from this podcast. Like hearing how the start went and here and knowing how this oh, is going to go. Gonna get nuts. If you're a person <laughs> who doesn't like cross talk in your podcasts, I, I'm sorry, but this week's episode is probably not for you. But I think it's it's going to be an enjoyable discussion, so I'm going to leave it as is, and I don't mind it. Um, so yeah, this there's going to be a great debate format. Uh, New Barama, as I said, you have some ideas for the base rules for this debate. Um, so we're uh, we should probably clarify like what kind of player we're going to recommend it to. That way, we can have some sort of idea what class they would want to see and stuff like that uh, i would say well Duran, you're more familiar with the mmo space how do you, what do you think we should pitch this idea towards um i would imagine the idea would be pitched towards just kind of the average mmo player i mean there's a lot of mmos out there most of them play very similarly to each other um i think a lot of us can or pretty much all of us can can the one thing we can agree on is this game, game in a lot of ways plays very differently from those mmos right. um but that's not necessarily something you can see very easily from the outside. So that would be probably uh, a good starting point for your argument as to, you know, why uh, your class or whatever might be the best thing for them to choose is, you know, maybe what's different about it, maybe what's the same. 
of okay. what they're used to. Wait, I'm confused here. Are we, are we each? Are we yeah, each all, um, recommending yeah, a class to a different type of? Uh, player? No, we are. Oh, we're yeah. picking one type of player, and the topic is what class do we think people should start with in Guild Wars Two? Um, I, I think that's a great idea. We'll just pitch it towards the average gamer in our minds. Let's just say the average MMO gamer oh, or average. The average MMO gamer or the average gamer who's not into MMOs? Because I think yeah. that's more interesting. Ooh. Or I, the, I like average. Because I have I have one specific friend in mind who like loves RPGs, like was big into like all the other scrolls games that he just picked up, like Xenoblade. So he's big into all kinds of art, all different kinds of RPGs, but he hates MMOs. Let's uh, let's open it up in terms of so, gamer then, because in my opinion, the class I've picked in my head is applicable to both. <laughs> I think mine specifically MM, MMO gamers who are disillusioned. All right, with- that's fine, yeah, and right you can here. use that as part of your argument. So, um, who wants to start off? I'm, I'm not gonna I'm gonna throw it out there because I'll, I'll start off. Okay, start go. Off. So just just as a disclaimer, I think you know this. You you shouldn't take this as like you know I got to play this class now because the combat system in Guild Wars is already widely different compared to any other games. Yeah. So I'm I'm sure you'd enjoy every class. Like I know I did, but same. Some classes, oddly enough. Are better than others. Not all <laughs> um, and, and I'm going to go out and say that, like, the class I'm going to recommend is not the class I'll be playing. I'll be playing the Guardian. But I, I think to a person who is new to Guild Wars and stuff like that, I would recommend the Mesmer. Oh as, God, as the go-to class. See, I, I can, I can see why. This is a dumb I, idea. I, 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 I get where you're coming idea. from. Um, I think your your face is shit and you suck and you just poop. Well, I'm, I'm an... your face is stupid. <laughs> well, the thing is, the difference between any other class and mesmer specifically is mesmer is a completely unique class. You won't find it in any fucking game. I mean, give me a mesmer knockoff other than Guild Wars One, and which is and which the is mesmer Guild Wars Two yeah. is vastly different from Guild Wars One. Which was already unique. They they serve the same function, i.e., pissing yeah. everyone else off, but they do it much differently. But it is in MMOs, even very specifically, it is a completely unique class. You you won't. Okay, find hold on. Anything like I'm going to say something about mesmer. If I call the mesmer in structured PvP, and you call someone else who you're is a jerk, yeah, yeah, fuck, fuck yeah. you, fuck you. Fuck you, go die. I, I, absolutely unanimous agreement. I think across the board on that one. If you call off the mesmer, you are a fuckhead. <laughs> yeah, if, if any of you guys listening to this at home uh, did that in the stress test or this past beta weekend event, uh, just send me your address so I can come back. <laughs> well, because like it's you. bad enough that they already made it so that whenever, uh, I think it's when they dodge or something something happens, you drop target. No, it's when well, you let's describe the Mesmer. New Brahma, can you describe the Mesmer? Um, so a Mesmer is like, uses magic. Oh, man. Are you serious? <laughs> That's 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 what you came up with. Yeah. This right, is so your the, elaborate the, prep. The Mesmer's baseline is illusions and condition based kind of thing. Um that especially stuns. So the main I feel like the main mechanic of the Mesmer is illusions and clones. So the Mesmer can basically create illusions and clones of itself to either, you know, distract or confuse the enemy or just, you know, do more damage overall by creating multiple clones of yourself hitting down on the enemy. And I feel like it's especially useful for PvE. I have not tried anything Mesmer-like in PvP, so I can't say specifically, but I would assume that if it's anything like Guild Wars 1 PvP, everyone's just going to be a swearing. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that, that, that is accurate. Yeah. Yeah, that's accurate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it's, well to just to... I was saying words I didn't even know I knew. <laughs> So just to like outline that for in the PvP sense. Um, so how they've done it is, in most cases, uh, the clones are exactly the same as the caster. And this is talking in a PvP sense. Like you, in many cases, sorry, you cannot tell the difference between the clone and the caster. Um, phantasms are a different thing. They create multiple types of illusions. The mesmer clones and fight phantasms. Phantasms are you've seen it if you saw our live show, or probably most of the people in this podcast already know what we're talking about here. Um, but they're like a different. They look like a ghostly image of the mesmer. The clones are kind of what the confusion comes from because um, they make like, an exact image of the mesmer with the it appears to be the same starting health. Like, it looks like they have they've taken the same amount of damage when you create them. I don't I know. I believe it's it's a little bit less health or quite a bit less. Oh no, but the actual health no, no, it no, has, no, no. like in terms of percentage, yeah, on the bar oh, you yeah, see the because yeah, I th- I'm pretty sure how much damage they take is always the same. But because it's all about visual like illusions, like confusing the enemy player on like a real like IRL basis. Like you see the Mesmer and you see his clones, especially with many of his abilities, which allow him to switch places with his clones. Like you can get legitimately confused 
um, by them. But I, I personally use my Mesmer clones as like suicide bombers because you can do that. You can, I spawn just a shitload of clones and then blow them up to daze and stuff like that. Yeah, then you flick missions. That extremely useful, especially mm -hmm. when they're on the brink of death and you don't have much use for them. Yeah, and I, th I, mean, timing, I think you are is very key in that. That is an awesome class, but you are completely wrong in yeah, recommending this wrong. to a new person. See, I can see where he's coming from because after you play Mesmer, everything else is going to seem like yeah, uh, it's well, that's that's really kind of the, that's kind of the issue, and I think why Cynic and I both are against that as somebody like bringing somebody oh, into it's this too good of a class. No, br it's too bring, good of a class. bringing somebody into Guild Wars two and trying to say you know sitting them down and be like, here, all right, check out the Mesmer. Like my my reason for that is because <laughs> back when I started playing wow uh or more so when i got my wife into playing wow the very first class she chose was the shaman because it looked cool and she was immediately confused as shit because the shaman was probably the most confusing <laughs> class in that game because you had this idea of like you had spells but you had melee stuff and then you had this whole totem management bullshit you had to deal with very similar to the the illusion management and clone management um and it can be a lot for somebody to take in who maybe isn't familiar with the mechanics of the game already and even beyond that, like some things as the mesmer that you do aren't immediately apparent as to why that's effective. Like, for example, like why would I want to make a clone that does zero damage when I hit the third skill on my bar versus this other clone that seems to do more damage but doesn't do the same animations as me when I do stuff? Like, right, but the thing, I feel like Guild Wars is fleshed, or Guild Wars 2 especially, is fleshed out enough that I never found the Mesmer to be... Like, there were definitely mechanics I didn't understand when I first played, but even, like, within an hour, I got a pretty firm handle of the game. Well, sure, in PvE. Sure, well, in PvE. Well, of course. I'm, you can do whatever the fuck in PvE. person to be first playing the game to hop onto PvP in the first hour, I mean... You got to blame anyone. That's a mistake in itself. Himself. You Maybe blame the guy. Now so I will say, in your argument is wrong, and during your face sucks. You stupid. Well, see, I was about to defend poop. noob and and kind of oh. go on the other side <laughs> of things and say that you know, again, going back to my wife is kind of you know her starter with, with experience with the shaman and didn't work out so well and it kind of steered her away from that class for a very long time. And wow, um, her first experience in Guild Wars. In Guild Wars 2 was the Mesmer. Uh, she said it sounded really interesting and she decided to check it out and she's decided that's going to be her class when the game launches. See? See? Thank you, Duran. That said, well, she has played sucks. Mesmers are That said, she has played in the past for you know quite a few years now, so she's very familiar with how these, how these games play. So the only, only real hurdle for her was really just learning that class. But it's, it's, it's weird because unlike the Warrior, for example, which is the class I'm going to play on release and the class I'm going to recommend. You like boring generic characters. Um, you? the you Mesmer, you can you can go through PVE using one entirely what one specific kind of skill set. By skill set, I don't mean what's on your bar. I mean like mental skill set, how you play the game. You can you you can do that in PVE. Oh, here we go, cynic down talking <laughs> PVE. Again. And play. I'm never going to have one you way playing dungeons, with right? Me, if you and that will be like that. entirely ineffective if you try to use, to play the same way in PVP. Like, I, I guarantee you, if you use your glass cannon rifle warrior build in in my in a dungeon, you would. Oh no! Yeah, I well, I don't use a glass cannon rifle I think, warrior build. Uh, but I think um, PVE is a bit more complicated than you're making. Yeah, it out. I, yeah. No, I, but, I think cynic. No, I, I, I think I think when you're talking about I'm talking when about you're that. saying PVE, you're you're talking leveling. Whereas I think when noob and, no, and no, Shimmer are talking, talking about they're talking like dungeon and. I'm talking about neither of these things. I'm talking about how AI reacts to what the Mesmer does versus how a human reacts to how, what the Mesmer does. That's what I'm talking about. Like, the Mesmer in PvP is all about creating those elements of in-real-life deception, right? But when it comes to PvE, you're you probably going to be more effective if you start doing things like AoE clone spam shatters. Like, the stuff that do, does mass degeneration or mass... Which, which does, definitely again, has, like, effects in World vs. World, for example... About PVE is that, you know, not all monsters are created equal. Some are bosses and have really special abilities you would not find. But they still have the, like, specific I, know, I, I can get I can get what yeah. he's saying. Like, I, I understand like, where you're coming from. Like, Mesmer, yeah. you have to actually, like, you have to realize that it's another person right, you're trying to mess with, not just an AI. Yeah, exactly. That's it's, exactly what it's, 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 yeah, it's, like, it's, it's a very but, different but, mental skill set to, to but, play those two but, ways. But your opinion's wrong. And, your opinion's <laughs> and um, what, what do you think is the best class? Wait, for me? Well, I, I want to stay on the Mesmer for a little bit longer. I, I also right. say that um, it is the most unique class in Guild Wars 2, in my opinion. Your Gwen's a Mesmer. Gwen's a Mesmer. Oh, God. And but now you've yeah, like right back off it again. 
<laughs> See, you keep doing this, maybe like like Gwen. you get people to go on your Gwen. side, and then right before they're willing to do it, you just fucking turn on them. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but. I, <laughs> to be fair, I helped I, him with I that. see where you're coming from, and they, they are. And Shinboy's point, like once you master the mesmer, they are definitely one of the high, one of the higher, one of, skill capped yes. class, one of the no, higher. The no, I will go on highest. saying right now they no, are the higher. No, you're I will, incorrect. I Elementalist. That. Oh god, <laughs> you, is one you of the higher wrong. skill capped classes. Then you will definitely have an easier experience moving on to someone else, like the uh, warrior, for example, which is much simpler, like straight up, much simpler. Um, but at the but same once point, you get like, a hang of the skills, so it is fun. an absolute joy to play. But I can say that for all the classes. All the classes are amazing yeah. in Guild Wars 2. I can say that for most um, of the classes. <laughs> okay, Duran, what, what, what? Oh, oh damn. You're boring. You're boring. <laughs> you're boring. You're boring. Oh, you're damn. Boring. That boring. just happened. <laughs> you're boring, Duran. <laughs> so, so, Does that hurt your feelings? Because what you said really hurt my feelings. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of uh, highest um, skill cap. <laughs> Or boring care and APM. Um, yeah. and APM. and AB, yeah. Um, I actually, yeah, this is the wrong game. If you're looking for an APM. <laughs> well, I know the the, mes- the elementalist man. Well, yeah, I think with the elementalist, I, I think with Starcraft, <laughs> go finish. I think with the elementalist, story. it depends on the the play style you choose, and that's why I think that's a really good class for somebody coming into this game who I, I think is as is, is is familiar with other MMOs, maybe has played WoW or Star Wars or Rift or something like that. Um, and so they have familiarity with with how MMO mechanics work, uh, but maybe obviously not as much so with how Guild Wars Two works. I think that the Elementalist is a very good starting point because it doesn't have the weapon st- sw- weapon swap mechanic. Well, which, yeah, describe the Elementalist. So the, just, uh, the just Elementalist go from base levels. Uh, unlike the other ones, uh, it doesn't swap weapons. Instead, what it has is it has four attunements um, that are by default mapped to F one through F four. You can remap them however you want, um, and they are you know the fire, water, uh, air, and earth attunements. And you can kind of swap between them on the fly. When you swap off of one, you get a fairly lengthy cooldown, so you can't immediately swap back to it again. Um, and that's basically kind of their replacement for weapon swapping. And, yeah. and each well, each the, the swap back is, they do something when you switch uh, to them. That depends from on yes. the, that depends on on the traits you take. But that's that's going a little bit deeper in. Um, but the reason yeah. why I would suggest that to somebody who is who has played MMOs in the past um, is, like I said, it's familiar enough with them because it doesn't have the weapon swapping. Um, it is a mage style character, something a lot of people can relate to. And and if you're More of the same. and if you are playing the say staff, I'd so disagree with that. if you're playing like the like say the staff, it's it's a fairly easy um, play style to get into. Now that said, yeah, there are there are avenues of the uh, the elementalist that are much much harder, and that's what I love about the classes. There's so much diversity in how that class yeah. is played. That you can get in real deep and play in completely different playstyles and get into some very very difficult playstyles with very high reward. Let's just say this, right? So when someone usually describe, someone comes from a different game and you describe to them the basics of the elementals as you just did, um, when saying that, hey, the elementals is the thing that costs elemental magic, so you can get water, fire, earth, and whatever, lightning. Um, they they generally just go, oh, okay, so it's the mage. They just shrug and go, oh, it's yeah. the mage. It's probably going to be pretty. Boring. And I did the same. But then you have to say the something. Game. Yeah, but then you have to say, well, this is a game described, like especially as we talked about last week, um, this is a game made for an average skill bar length of uh, 10 skills with one weapon swap every 10 seconds, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's what the game is designed for on a base level. But then you have to say, well, the Elementalist, well, you know, you kind of have double that many skills available to you at any given moment of time and ways for those skills to interact with one another that creates additional complexity even beyond that. Yeah. Like, these insane how much you have to keep your mind on as an Elementalist, well, just in terms of, like... And, it, and, and that's, well, it, that's, that's, yeah. that's true, too. But I think, that, again, like going back to one of the reasons why I would suggest it as a first class for somebody is there's a lot of growth potential with the Elementalist. There is a, Absolutely. There's a low barrier for entry, but a very high skill cap. Yeah, that, that's that's absolutely how I would describe the Elementalist. A relatively high skill cap. The, no, probably I mean, the highest skill the cap. The highest. Oh, the oh highest. No. Well, see, oh. like, I don't know. I don't know if you can say that now okay. because have you really looked into how crazy yeah. Mesmer stuff can get? Yes, I have. I mean, I'm not. I'm not like saying you're wrong. I'm just saying, have you like actually looked at the other classes to see how? Well, yeah, and yeah. I guess when I, when I say when I say high skill cap with them, it's it's more of a things you have to have be aware of in your mind every second that you're playing the character. And I'm talking about in a PVE standpoint. Um, yeah. And that, I, I think mean, that I'm all PvP. depends on your I'm build. PvP. 
or sorry, PvP. That's what I meant. Um, and that, and again, that oh, all depends on your build. Like I said, if you are doing like say a staff elementalist build, um, that is going to be much lower. You're going to have a, a bit more leeway with what you're doing, and you tend to stick to one to two uh, attunements that you kind of swap between. Um, however, with the build that I um, fire basically and more yeah. fire. Um, however, with fire the, with and water, the, fire and water, I would say yeah. Um, but with the build yeah. that, that I um, have been working with. Um, this last week with like the stress test and the theory crafting before that, uh, you are using all four attunements at pretty much all Absolutely. times. You are swapping constantly through them. Um, and yeah, that I'm requires so- a, a lot to be going on in your brain at once because you're not, you're not only worrying about like what, th- what attunements are off cooldown, what abilities are off cooldown, but also paying attention to your, your condition stacks and knowing when you need to swap over to your water and knowing when you need to pop misform to, to GTFO. Um, knowing how many stacks are up on the other person, so you know when you need to use your your uh, long cooldown bursts. Like there's just there's a lot of things, and then of course mixed in with all of that is the dodging because they are a glass cannon, and if you are going to play a melee style, they you can die very fast if you are not keeping on top of you know making sure you're getting out of things and dodging the proper big attacks. That's like one of the primary advantages of no, elementalist because again you, you describe to someone the elementalist and they picture a dude in a robe with a big staff shouting into the wind, aka Lord of the Rings. Like they, you don't really see, you don't really realize the fact that elementalist can be played in three very distinct, I would argue, play styles: mid range, close range, and long range. They are they can be spec amazingly into each because I think what was the, the most of course mid range could could actually vary depending on what your offhand is uh, a lot. I think yeah. having having a dagger yeah. offhand is very very different play style than having like a focus offhand. Yeah, that's that's I I would agree to that. But again, like you, you you're well, the point I'm making is as an elementalist, if you're a person who likes, for example, the idea of a big gruff dude beating on dudes, you can kind of recreate that as an elementalist. Like when I'm when I played Ellie and I summoned a lightning hammer, for example, which we still haven't tried in PvP, we really need to. Yeah. Um, a lightning hammer, you are suddenly like, you feel omega strong like you have this giant hammer in your hands yes. omega strong. or like you know the, summoning <laughs> like lightning of thor a roll around you when you move yeah or grabbing like the oh, the the uh elite skill of the fucking fiery great sword like you can totally do things like you can actually if you wanted to you could create a build based around conjuring these giant ass weapons and going in there all warrior style like that's something you yeah. can do but you can also be the standard wearing robes holding a staff throwing out fireball spells if you want yeah, to do that yeah you can, you can do that Exactly, and so my, my, this comes to my, one of my major arguments against the elementalists is um, because they don't have weapon swapping. Like I, I, lo- I actually love the fact that they have very low barrier to entry and a very high skill cap. Um, I, in fact, the developers pretty much agree with me on that point. Like some of the, many many of the developer um, live streams of PvP they've done in the past, they definitely state that the elementalist generally pretty much requires the highest APM and pretty much the highest skill cap. So hey, suck it. Um, <laughs> no, no, they're wrong. No, the developers <laughs> are wrong. <laughs> the developers. <laughs> It was one person's Durin, opinion. Durin, 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 I'll be honest with mm-hmm. you. Uh, I, I really like the LMLs. I, I play as the LMLs, and I can safely say it is one of my top 25 favorite professions in Guild Wars 2. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I really love the oh, double really? daggers. Top 25, wow. I know, I, I could have said top 50. Actually, maybe top 50, sorry. Um, but Oh, just got knocked down. <laughs> but in comparison, in terms of... Like I think you're underestimating like the skill cap of the mesmer, in terms that you, sure you have a lot of skills and it's it's a mix of you know managing the regular gameplay that every other class has plus you know switching between all skills at the, all times, but note like there's also ma- many different variations you could possibly play with mesmer and that includes micromanaging all of your images yeah into definitely that I would actually like, I, think I, think I, think the, the truth, I think the issue is that it's a different type of skill cap. Yes, exactly. So if I was to tell the truth, I would say that I actually, in in my heart, agree that the Mesmer ties with the Elementalist with the highest skill cap. I, oh, I, I just God. like disagreeing with Noob. Um, <laughs> you pussy. You, you got it. <sighs> but... Yeah, I heard that Warrior has a pretty high skill cap. Mm, eh, but, okay. You, you got you to gotta shoot the right... I'm, I'm, I, I'm going to last because I'm the host. Um, so, but I, I would say that the Elementalist, though, has the high skill cap, but also has the high APM requirement. And it's a requirement. In, I, I think like the argument of a very low barrier to entry applies to many of the classes because Arena has done a really fantastic job of having you go in there and not having to do much in the first couple of areas. Not that the first couple of areas are easy, but you can kind of get by by like having some crutch skills that you always go back to or a weapon that you always like. Yeah. Um, 
I, but I feel that once you start ramping up and, for example, warriors will have to start switching between weapons in combat instead of just relying on the great sword in PvE, for example, <laughs> um, you, you kind of it will get to the point where the elementalists will also have to start achievement dancing and achievement dancing all the time to remain in its level of effectiveness as it is in early areas in the higher level areas later. I, I, I think that that skill cap kind of progresses and same with the Mesmer for both classes. Um, my main, so that's all a good thing in my opinion. My main issues with the elementalist though is the fact that it doesn't have weapon swapping, which kind of sounds weird. Um, I know that well, you I have double. I can see that because available. I can see that because like you're right. trying to introduce them to this game and that is one of the major functions of the game. So I could see that yeah. being a kind of but I feel like attunement swapping can very much replace weapons. Absolutely, weapons. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. No, yeah. but even beyond that, like um when you're an ele- elementalist, if you um start with one weapon, it is kind of locked into that range type. Except for the staff which I've seen I, which I previously thought was only really operative as a very long range weapon, but seeing a developer playing it as a close range weapon was eye-opening. But that's the staff which you can have that because it does have a range of 1200, which don't worry what that means if you're new to the game. Um but when you when you have daggers out, you're kind of locked into melee. You can't weapon swap into your long range option. You you can't um, switch between range types easily. Like I know you can you can get in and get out quickly because obviously the elementalist has so many options available to him at any given time. But you're kind of stuck in one way for that period. And and I realize that PVE is, is the case where even between battles, it's really easy to swap weapons and your entire skill bar um, by just drag dropping them in the menu. But beyond that, like you're kind of screwed. Like if you're in a boss fight, for example, you, and you can't get out of combat to swap your weapons, you kind of fucked. You, you're, you're stuck well, that's with that why specific I, range type. That's why I would absolutely say that, you know, the, the dagger dagger um, build is a, it, very difficult. It is very much a PVE or PVP build. I, I would not try to use that thing in PVE. Not even. I would disagree with that one. actually. Yeah, I really like the daggers in PvE. Um, in PvE, that, that is the build I yeah, I, I, I ran dagger dagger for quite a while. I preferred the staff, but I, I, I can see yourself. No, I'd say for for PvE, you have to go staff just because. Yeah, I would say no, I would because... say staff or or um a, a fo- or a focus a uh, scepter based build would probably be best for PvE. I would say yes, but only for the first twenty levels when you well okay, when you yeah. can get up to um when you can get up to the uh, major trait slot, you can get the vigor um vigor on a critical hit. And then everything opens up, um, but that that doesn't mean anything to people who don't realize or aren't really familiar with the elementalist. Um, oh God, no! Well, see, we're, we're we're talking about a a portion of the game that most people haven't really seen yet, so it's hard to really say for sure whether something is going to be viable at that point. But I'm t- I'm thinking like early game, you know, first like you said, first twenty levels where most of us have seen um, the PVE dagger dagger is absolutely not really something I would recommend going with at all. I really like Dagger Dagger. Dagger Dagger. Dagger Dagger. I mean, I, I messed around a little bit with Dagger Dagger in PvP like a couple beta weekends ago. I mean, it was fun, but I didn't really like experiment with anything too crazy. But in PvE, definitely got to go with the stat. I mean, in PvE, I'm you back. definitely got to go with Mesmer. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's the answer. Um, but you, no, so, okay, so that, that was one of my major issues. Um, obviously, being stuck into a specific range type. But my other major, and this actually, I believe, is biggest issue of against recommending this to a new player especially if they're an mmo player is that unlocking skills on an elementalist can be oh jesus yeah that can be a bitch especially especially if you've been playing with a staff and then you suddenly pick up a a scepter you're like oh i want to go check this out now and you gotta spend the next 20 minutes unlocking all your abilities again yeah Yeah, because I, i could agree with that because, because as, as I said earlier, like it's awesome because you have about twice as many skills available to you at any given time versus any other class, right? You have the four attunements across your weapon. The problem is when you unlock that first skill slot, it doesn't unlock for all four attunements. It's only unlocking, which I think they should do. It's only unlocking for fire or whatever you need at the moment. You then mm. have to unlock the second skill slot and the third skill slot and then switch to your next attunement to unlock the first and second and third. And, well, that's the, probably the fastest way to do it. Like, straight up, you are stuck in a situation, especially for an You're average gamer. Grinding. Yeah, an average gamer is used to checkboxes. They're, they're used to that kind of system, that mentality to unlock everything. I think you fell into the same problem, yep. didn't you, Duran? Yeah. yeah and, and, and the problem with that, too, is like like the idea of, of weapon skill grinding is something that, you know, that's that's a very old uh, function of MMOs that has been pulled out of pretty much every major MMO. So, I, I mean, this is a different kind of weapon skill um, uh, grinding, but it still essentially is weapon skill grinding. So it is something I hope that they, they go back and, and maybe, like you said, 
you know, when you unlock the first ability, you unlock it for all attunements. I, I really hope they go back yeah. and do that. That would make it a lot and, better. Or just make them unlock faster. Like, I, I understand, because what they want you to do is when you unlock ability for the first time, it is almost... 100% likeliness for that for a player of video games to start using that ability just to see what yeah. it does, right? When you get something new, you use it. Um, which is kind of what they want to do because they want you to, to realize that there's four attunements and use things across the four attunements and realize the differences and strengths and weaknesses of each attunement. And the only way to do that and to force a player to do that is to give them that new car feeling with every new skill and make them use it for the first time to feel, to see how it feels. Um, that's good. That's a lot of new cars, but. <laughs> They didn't decrease the timer on how fast you unlock skills, even though you have more. Like, just there's like, okay, what was it like? Two hours it took you to unlock all the skills. Oh I didn't even have all of them unlocked. Still, I didn't even touch the water skills yet. <laughs> I didn't. And uh, a lot of those are like are are pretty much vital to survivability. Like some of oh, those absolutely. skills you kind of need, especially the water stuff. Um, and for a player who's just gotten into it for the first time, they might not even realize that you can hit... Oh yeah, they also unlock the attunements slowly as you level up. So you start mm. with just fire, I think it was, and then you get fire and earth, maybe. No, that's fire, fire, water, and then fire, water, air, and then fire, water, air, earth. Yeah, so like you, you do kind of get the water skills kind of early, but that's only one weapon set. Like usually, in those first five levels, you, you kind, of, kind of just play with like one weapon set. Very few people try like do what we do and just go through all the weapon sets at all times to figure out which one's right for them. Like, yeah, I, that's my major argument against the elementalist, in my opinion. Aside from the fact that you know it's one of those squishy cost of classes that sucks. I <laughs> it's, it's only squishy if you're bad. Like that's yeah. the thing is it, it's it's. Be- because well, because, because argument, this is a game really? because this is a game that doesn't have tanks and healers and stuff like no one is really quote unquote squishy it's just a matter of whether you oh, I are don't know. Well, right, it, but, it's but a matter I of we're recommending this to a new player we are but we're, uh, what I'm recommending this is to a player who has played MMOs in the past and if you've played MMOs in the past and you know how a mage works this is going to be similar to that except that you have a much higher survivability rate than say like a mage in WoW because you have direct control over whether you take yeah. damage from a hit or not. Exactly, and also like the whole Guild Wars Two combat plays different from other games. Totally comes into this because you straight up you can dodge roll and you heal yourself. Like you can, you're not relying on an external healer. The Elements is given the abilities out of the box, and I played Elementalist for twenty to twenty two levels. I know I know that out of the box, you straight up are given the abilities to survive. You just have to figure them out unlock them and get used to using them it is a case where you will be capable as an elementalist i'm just saying for the sake of argument that i prefer harder classes for new players um but i personally love i love the elementalist i'm rolling one myself um shim boy what, what were your thoughts on what you'd recommend to a new player it's bad i don't, don't know play it. okay <laughs> well, what is it okay I don't know what it is. no 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 um since you guys I guess you could recommend it to an MMO player, but I'm going to recommend it. I'm calling out my friend <laughs> All right, right go. now because I know he I know he listens every so often. So Tyler, if you're listening <laughs> to this, um, hey Tyler, I love you to my you account. And, hey and Tyler, you ki- you keep <laughs> you keep making warriors on my account. Stop doing that. Make a goddamn guardian instead. <laughs> oh bam! Really? Okay. Oh yeah, I yeah, can support because you. he always he always likes to play the melee classes in like all these kinds of games. So he just goes and makes a warrior. But I'm like, no, you know how a warrior is going to work. Like guardians, you may think you know how they're going to work. But oh, yeah. oh yeah, I definitely. second your guardian statement. <laughs> so Tyler, don't like, make you a guardian. Can, they're can, fucking boring. Yeah. Hey Tyler, Tyler, don't listen to anything. <laughs> make a, make a warrior, warrior and, and give it a great sword. <laughs> God, no, 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 no. That that makes the game too easy. <laughs> makes the game uh, awesome. No, but I I think I think any new player should should make a guardian because it's one of those classes like the elementalist, I guess, where you look at it and you're like, oh, I know how that works. It's no big deal. Then you actually get into it, and it turns out there's a lot more um, yeah. flexibility. Well, people to, look at it and a staff go, to heal. That's a paladin for a melee class. Yeah, but like you know what? I'm just gonna heal with a staff as a heavy armor class. That's kind of weird. Yeah, it's, See, exactly. I, I, it's, I don't know. I would disagree with with the guardian being a kind of a good starter, only because again, you do have this preconceived idea that this is a paladin style uh, character, um, so they can probably take some pretty good hits, like like a warrior could. But they're more magic based, probably a bit of healing. And one of the biggest issues I think is that it's a very very support heavy class, which doesn't tend to be very popular with a lot of people, and also um, can be a bit. Uh, off-putting for a lot of people, especially ones that are maybe new to MMOs in general. Well, 
Well, I mean, the reason I say you start with is because I believe you start with a sword. You do start with the weapon sword. they give you. Yep. Yeah, so it's a heavy armor class, melee based class. So it's really easy to pick up, like literally as soon as you jump yeah. in. Yet it, there's it unfolds. I, I'm trying to think of how to word this. It unfolds quicker than the warrior, where the warrior stays that heavy armor That's melee true, yeah. based yeah. class with the rifle gotcha. and stuff. While like it's it they sort of start at the same point. But they diverge. But the guardian branches out more, so it shows you more of the complexities of the combat system. While warrior just sort of See, that's the thing, though. The, the complexity of the guardian's combat system is I'm gonna throw out a bunch of buffs, and that's not that's not like <laughs> like that's something that no, some people liked. No, no. no like that play style, uh, the play style of being kind of the support buffer is some people something that some people like. But but for the majority of people, they just like hitting things and seeing big numbers, and that's a good thing for somebody coming. But the thing is, it. you you can play it as as a DPS that, class, especially right. with the spirit weapons. Yeah, oh, but at that point, like you're, I, you, turn, you turn into a caster, and that just feels really weird as somebody who has... Well, no, the fact that you have that much flexibility with a class is a good thing. Numerama. I, I encourage people to play those classes. Can you that describe you can to me do. what the Guardian is and why you are choosing it as your actual first class? Um, that's mostly because I, I always like to play support roles, and, I, and I'm not a selfish piece of shit, so I like helping <laughs> other people. And that's why I like playing... Th- so... Not only is this a good solo class, but this is, I feel like this is the kind of class that I would always want to have someone in like a dungeon. So what is the Guardian? Because they are very flexible tanks. They're very good at DPS and they are just all around, you know, good. So so good support, good DPS, good damage, everything. And you know, why wouldn't you pick? Oh god! The best I, I will say, and this all. maybe goes Not a little biased. And they're kind of they're kind of <laughs> easy in like low level, like it, with the, with the virtues and the right. regen and all that. It, it makes I don't want to say it makes the game easy, but you have more leeway before you just get dominated if you're not quite. Good I actually disagree. Um, because I I played a guardian for about ten levels not much i didn't like it that much but i played it as a char uh, in the char starting area back when it was a little bit less balanced that's because well, there's your yeah, there's you're playing, problem. As a char. You're playing as a char that's subhuman, <laughs> not human. but yeah the, the, this char starting area back then was more difficult than it is now but the point i'm making is uh, so the guardian for those who don't know is or, or what its strengths and weaknesses are the guardian is a, a primarily melee class with one or two ranged options two two one real range option and one like mid-range option um that is i wouldn't recommend the staff Unless you're playing pure support, uh, so it's essentially it's it's it looks on paper like it would be the knight in shiny armor, like the the heavy armor class that runs into battle with like just swinging its sword. And, and, and <laughs> oh, Logan Thackeray is a guard. Yeah, there you so go. There and, you go. And, and then buffing his allies and like healing himself. Like, that, and to some extent, that's that's correct. But what you have to look at is so the guardian is the heavy armor class, so that's the highest level of armor in the game, which is generally gives it a little bit more survivability, even though other things does affect survivability aside from armor. Um, but it also has the lowest health in the game. The same amount of health as the elementalist and a couple, I think, in one or two other classes. Um, th- so essentially, you're walking in and you are pretty much mid tier when it comes to out of the box survivability, just in terms of stats. What the Guardian does have, though, is ways of giving itself protection, giving itself self healing, um, giving itself different different ways to kind of cope with the fact that it has low HP like but high armor. Two out of the three virtues, they're healing. Yeah, one actually is a direct heal, and one gives blocks every f- five seconds or an immediate block if you activate. It's not every five seconds, but yeah, yeah. So or every ten seconds. No, it's like every forty seconds. Um, <laughs> but the the, the virtues, which is what he's referring to, is the class mechanic. So obviously, the elementalist has ways of switch your. your um, switching your elements. Uh, the Mesmer has the um, illusions and that kind of stuff as their class mechanic is shattering them. Um, the Guardian has Virtues, which is, in my opinion, the least awesome class mechanic in the entire bloody game. It is, oh, I, it is, I disagree. I absolutely You're agree. Head. <laughs> Thank you, Duren. Um, yeah. It is well, actually a way... Like, going back to what I was saying before, like your, your class mechanic is, I can throw buffs on everyone. Yay! <laughs> what? Yeah, you might not. Find, that's why, like, and that's honestly, and new. See, it's not that that's a bad style. play style, but that's the thing is that, that that's something that is a play style that you prefer. You prefer being kind of the support buffer dude. That is not the majority um, stance with MMO players. Right, right. That's why I don't. I, I wouldn't recommend it for everyone. Like, I'm. I, that's why I'm recommending the best. Yeah, that, well, and that's that's why I was saying like <laughs> I would not recommend this for a new player because the the style of play that the guardian mostly is i mean i know you can you can do a you know high damage style build if you wanted to uh, but that's not really what the, the guardian's really about 
Like that's why I would not recommend it to a you know a, a new player. Well, no. Well, see, see, hold on. The way the, what I'm getting at here is like I recommend it because. I think the Guardian is the perfect class to play if you don't know what class to play. Because <laughs> you start out, no, because you start out with the melee. So once it unfolds and you see like, oh, this is all support, but I really like that melee stuff. You found out, oh, I like the warrior or, you know, you like the healing stuff. You can either stick with that or go play a water element, elementalist. I don't know. I think it, it shows you what you like. I, maybe, but I also think another argument for the Guardian would be to say that if you're a person who wants to invest in long-term viability in every situation, the Guardian is probably a good first bet. Because just looking at the moment, I can see the Gar- Guardians being a crutch for, let's just say, poorer players or players, not, not, not the person himself, I'm talking about other players, poorer players or um, maybe players who want to optimize in certain ways and are perhaps more used to other games for example wow um i can see high level dungeon dungeon runs for example some people requiring guardians oh yeah i've I've already been hearing that like i've been hearing people say that like in in, like pve um you pretty much when running explorables and stuff they could not see doing that without having a guardian in the group period like they just won't exactly Exactly. that's another reason i picked them because they will always be useful it is a complete you can bend the guardian to whatever you want to play. Well, I think Support. it's. I think that's true. That's the thing. That's true that's, of that's, all that's, the that's, classes. That's not, that's not the reason why they're. Yeah, that, that, that's true too. Like that's absolutely true of all the classes. Uh, but I, yeah. that's not the reason why they're bringing. It. They're, they're bringing it because it's the only class that brings these buffs. No, no, I'm I, no, I'm saying like that's why I think it sh- it should be. Well, that's why it's a good reason. It is. It is one of the only classes right. that brings this buffs because most of its buffs do have overlaps with the elementalist and warrior, for example. But um, in, in many cases, it's it's going to be the thing where again, there's those people who are very into other games. I'm not going to bring out any names here. Wow. Um, which which is pretty much. <laughs> hey, on what? Which uh, which essentially Fuck, who yeah, will be rest. relying on the guardian as a crutch for their their rate their dungeoning team as the way to keep each other alive. So you'll definitely see. Um, long-term viability wise people requiring the guardian for longer like just out of pure fact people will not adapt to how guild wars be approaches. popular if you're not popular so basically yeah, yeah, you'll, you'll if, be if you want to be if you want to be a popular guy go run a guardian and run a healing spec because for all yeah, those yeah, wow players spec. that are coming in and 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 trying to play this game they're going to want that healer because like you said they're going to use it as a crutch and they'll use yeah. it for that until they realize they don't need it, they don't need a healer they don't need any way specialized you can exactly. totally run in there with five dps and then they're going to toss you to the side well, maybe not what the one to no, decide, because no, as a Guardian, no. as Noob brings up, you can definitely spec other ways. Um, what I would argue, though, is like all the classes, they do have... They, they can be spec to any of the niches, so high damage, high support, um, balanced, uh, de- high condition damage, that kind of stuff. You can... You can Spec all the classes to each of niches, but all the classes do them in different ways, A, and B, you definitely have the niche the class is perhaps most well designed for. So in the case of the Guardian, you generally, looking at it at least at the moment, I would say it's most designed towards the support niche. Like you, You're definitely yeah. looking at a case where... Um, yeah, yeah, definitely, but I feel like, I feel like the Guardian does everything better the other yeah. ones the, no, it does the other ones better than other classes do their not main one yeah. better if that's a nice i disagree any sense it, at all. it is a better jack of all trades i disagree than... yeah i think the oh, elementalist but... is probably the best jack of all trades in the game oh no um no. <laughs> i mm, i disagree I not a support disagree. ellie and anyway but yeah well that aside that's pretty subjective we're saying that the the guardian definitely leads towards the support and it, Toward, in terms of long long term viability, there will always be a place for a support player in a team. Yep. Um, it, it doesn't matter if that team is being a full dumbasses and requiring a support player. I just I'm just talking about if I'm running in in a group dungeon run, I will never say no to a guardian. But at the same in the same way, I'd never say no to the, any of the other classes. Right, but so. the thing is, it it if you it if you're just playing the game, I wouldn't care if there's guardians or not. Yeah. But if if speed clears are a thing, and if a guardian's required. Which it well, probably Guardian's probably going to be the one speed. required for a speed clear. I right. can see that being the case. Right, and that's that's the niche. But this is conjecture. Like again, uh, we can say just for that first starting period, for the first couple months or so, before people realize that you can do whatever the fucking dungeons and P- in it was to, you will probably be the popular guy playing a Guardian. Um, yeah. And as Shinboy said, I'll have all the friends. I, I, I can definitely say that you can use the Guardian as a gateway to other classes and and discover its own innate strengths. I, I, I would somewhat agree with that. What, I, what I'd say is the um, the negative point of playing Guardian is that they're fucking lame. 
Um, <laughs> well, and, and you know what? You should jump off. You, a you, you, like, like talking about using a class as a gateway to like other classes, I would argue that you could totally do that with the elementalist because yeah, I could, could play an elementalist as a caster style. I could play an elementalist as a thief style. I can play. I can or, play an elementalist be like as this. a warrior big weapon style. Mm, no, you, you can you can attend. Oh, no, totally can. You, you can go straight you up. Totally totally can. Can. You you can use yeah. this as a gateway, as in like, oh fuck, this this class is shit. I better switch to another class. <laughs> well, that's course, that's, that's kind of what Shin Boy is getting at that's, for the Guardian. The Let's just say that. Well, yeah, I mean, no, 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 because I actually I actually enjoyed well, my time uh, with Guardian. Guardian is pretty good. Guardian is fantastic, but it's just not the it's, way. It's you just said they were lame. It's, it's lame in that I hate the blue light warrior thing. I hate. Paladins. I hate the holy warrior. You seem to hate everything. Yeah. For someone who claims to be a fantasy <laughs> fan, you seem to hate everything about well, I, fantasy. I hate the generic fantasy, which is probably where the real fantasy fans are. Am I right? Hey, hey. Anyway. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> I think I heard some crickets outside my window. What? But, uh, you know, it's, it's just like the whole like, Warrior of Light, Paladin, Holy Justice thing is... In my opinion, is my major detractor from the Guardian beyond the way beyond the fact that I don't feel he does direct damage as well as the elementalist or warrior. I don't think he no, does. I don't think so either. Um, yeah, and I, I don't think he does AOE damage as well as the right. elementalist Remember or ranger. Remember the tank build I sent you, Cynic? Yes. That's that's the build I'm gonna run. No, I, I, I'm I'm well aware that all the classes can be spec towards these directions. You can do an AOE condition damage build as a. Um, as, as a guardian and you can do it pretty well uh, i'm just saying that you know like at, aside from the previously said aspects i which is like long-term viability short-term viability and that kind of stuff i, I feel that the guardian is kind of like a, a a moot class for most people aside from the people who really like the support for example if you come from a game where and you like playing dps i wouldn't recommend the guardian at all i, I, no, I would say absolutely not and yeah, that's like, and that's the thing is like that's the majority of players like the majority of players are not you know support style like support style from MMOs are tanks and healers and those tend to be the minority in players. Like, yeah, people like DPS. Just, period. God, I hate people so <laughs> much. I hate people. I wish people. Also, <laughs> I will say that you know I, I agree with Cynic to some extent. I, I'm not a huge fan of the whole paladin uh, ar- archetype, but more so my issue with the guardian. With uh, granted, what little I played of it, uh, but. Th- my reason for it is why I played a little bit of it. They're fucking boring. <laughs> You're boring. I mean, they are just a boring fucking See, I class. thought it was really fun. I, I found it to be the funnest class. I thought I thought when I played Ellie, I thought that was wow. Cool. I have no idea how you I can play. I want to slip my wrists Ellie. and murder every. Yeah, like, 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 what was Ellie, one of the most exciting? What so Ellie were you playing that was boring? Like I, I I'm genuinely curious <laughs> because I don't know. I got up to like level six and I was just like, yeah. I can't oh, take man. this anymore. It's, it's like. Um, see, that's the maybe thing. it was the whole weapon. Are, are, are you generally? It's, it's a cast. Are you generally like? Um, do you generally gravitate towards support style classes though? Uh yeah. And most of the I've played, I've either played a tank or something. Well, see, I think that's the thing. Like, you, like you are that way. Noob is definitely that way. So I think I could see why you guys would um, gravitate pr- promote that. Well, and, and promote that style because that's that's what you find the most fun. However, the majority of MMO players do not tend to gravitate towards tank or healer they, they straight up tend to gravitate towards dps like people yeah. just like seeing those big numbers and that's why they gravitate in that direction so like looking at you know a possibility for a new player assuming they're not the type that gravitates towards support style roles i would absolutely 100 percent guardian would be the last one i would send them towards <laughs> and then nope but guardian is nope. a great class and i, I have I to say know. again I, I, I still think guardian is a good one to start yeah, out with i feel like because, it's a good jack of all because of the way i'm i'm thinking like right at the very beginning here because of the way it starts it hands you a sword and says Go. i think well, the warrior does, does that too same. and it does it better yeah like they're, they're, uh, yeah. they're, they're st- if you're talking about the early starter stuff their starting abilities are a lot more interesting than the guardians are uh, so this brings me to mm. But I, I, I mean, I if, if you're Guardian introducing in, this in to while. someone who maybe hasn't played any MMOs and don't don't really know like what they want, the Guardian has the widest range of skills. Disagree. Available. I would disagree. Wrong. I would say the Elementalist Wrong. has the widest range Elementalist. of skills. Wrong. Well, the Warrior can use the yeah, most weapons. So, and that's, that's so true, that, too. Yeah, that's when it comes to my element of the argument. So first, going to start with the so negatives of playing warrior. The <laughs> negatives of playing warrior is number one with a bullet point: it's fucking boring from a conceptual level. The warrior is straight up your off the shelf. I do damage and I can take damage class. It it is straight up um, warrior crush. I I crush 
bastard ah, crushing uh, that, it, I'm terrible at that what? Kind of, I'm, I'm terrible I'm terrible at that kind of thing I'm I can't I can't do it bastards <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, best story don't have a you can dad. I, I also like dicks, apparently. Let's just go back to that. <laughs> That's the name of this um, episode. I cross bastards? All right, done. All right, so... Oh, I thought it was Cynic Likes Dicks. Yeah, Cynic Likes Dicks <laughs> might be... I, I'm Guardians terrible at improvising. Awesome. Anyway, so the warrior is the most boring During class. During stupid poop. Um... <laughs> Well, here you go. That's no, and that's what you think you. of when yeah, you think of Warrior. Um, so the, conceptually, it is it is lame. But then when you play it, and I, I think I've actually you find out it actually I, I've actually it. converted a bunch of people to Warrior mains over the last you know, month or so. Because there's a single glass cannon um, though, that everyone <clears throat> abuses. In PvP, it's not a PvP. glass. Ca- are you talking about the Great Sword oh, Glass well, Cannon yeah. Warrior? Yeah. Or not? Oh, sorry. It's not a glass cannon, but you're right. Yeah, the rifle warrior um, that will be nerfed. It's no well, it's, it's might, the might have been nerfed. nerfed it's, yeah, it might have been nerfed, and I might switch classes. Okay. But anyway, so what you realize is um, the warrior, and I, I'm actually going to extend the discussion after I finish this statement uh, to the other classes. Um, the the warrior is, in my opinion, the most. It, it kind of has the strengths of the elementalist and the guardian in that when you walk into it, you can use the warrior as a gateway to other classes, but it's also entirely self-sufficient. Um, because you, you can go into it and you start off with a sword in your hand, and obviously it's very simplistic. Um, you walk up to the things, and the first thing you realize when you're playing warrior is, hey, I can do a shitload of damage. I'm killing these things in like one or two hits. And then you take hits a couple times from a centaur, and you're like, whoa, those barely phased me. I'm a badass. Warrior gives you the biggest feeling of being a badass in Guild Wars 2, in my opinion. Um, you can take hits, you deal a shitload of damage, even from the very start of the game, you're very self-sufficient because your heals are very good. The first heal you start off with removes two conditions and heals half your health. Like straight, straight up, you start with the heaviest armor class in the game and the highest health in the game, base. Um, you're, it's pretty much the, in some ways, the negative part of this is it's kind of the easy mode first, first pick. Yeah, yeah it is. Like, cause you're literally destroying everything for the first area to two areas. As before long as you're not playing Norn. Difficult. <laughs> yeah, as long as you're not playing Norn or Char. Um, but that, they, those will be balanced out. But either way, like, that's one plus of the Warrior, I, I, in my opinion. But the, perhaps from my perspective, the bigger plus of the Warrior is the Warrior is actually active at any moment, at any range. It is, any Warrior spec you create can be viable as both a close range combat, uh, specialist but can also just be specced into a ranged secondary specialist or ranged primary specialist with a um melee offhand like the ways you can spec out warrior in terms of uh, methods of combat uh distances of combat types of combat it, it, it's it can be entirely varied throughout every type of combat in Guild Wars 2, except for the fact that it's very simplistic. So you can play a Rifle Warrior, which is 1,200 range, the longest in the game, except for the Longsword for Ranger. But then on your offhand, you can straight up have an axe and a Warhorn and be incredibly mobile, to be able to get up in people's faces and do a shitload of damage with the axe, direct damage with the axe. Like, that can be one spec. And that's, that is an entirely viable spec in both PvE and PvP, um, which... I don't know. I don't like the Rifle for PvE. I, I, I well, I, I, I'll get into that in, in a second. Um... In my opinion, a entirely viable spec in both both those combat types, but it's it's also one that you can change on the fly. Like if you want to be pure melee, sure, go hammer, go great sword with a also melee interim. You can, if you want to be condition damage, you can go or AOE condition damage. You can go longbow. You can do pretty much every type of combat in Guild Wars Two as the warrior at any given time because you just have so many options across all the weapons. They can actually use the most types of weapons of any other class in the game, but they also um, have perhaps the least complex combat mechanics so you can kind of get into everything it's got a very low bar- barrier of entry high survivability high damage it's it's probably what i recommend to anyone starting the game for the first time because this is just I, so all around i agree with the fact that it is it is all jack of trades and it's like it's really good for new players and everything but if someone is coming in wanting to see something new and interesting like, what's the newest most innovative thing that guild wars can offer yeah I would definitely not. Yeah, as a first it. impression for like, this yeah, is why you should play this MMO over other MMOs. Mm-hmm. The warrior, should, I don't think, is the way like. To it's go. almost as bad as the elementalist. Like, who the <laughs> I think the elementalist is different only enough. Someone, only someone who would want to troll their. No, friends I think the, uh, the elementalist is the different elementalist, enough okay? compared to because I've played like caster styles in other games. Not when you first start it. Not, not at when all. You first start. 
And that's the argument I'd, I'd use as well. Like the Elementus is one of those things where you come into it thinking that it's going to be one way and you realize that it's got, it is that way, but it's got a surprising amount of depth to it. And that's the thing, the like, yeah, like with, with the, well, and with the Elementalist, like you learn that like within two levels. Like yeah. uh, with the warrior, that comes a mm, lot later. I disagree. Well, the warrior, as soon I as mean, you get a ranged weapon, you realize, whoa, I'm actually really active at range. I can be really powerful. I can be a ranged and, tank. And it really that's you know, crazy. focuses on the fact that you should be switching weapons. Yeah. That helps you. Yeah, you can switch weapons. And then you have burst skills. Um, so the cross mechanic for the warrior is a burst skill. Um, you By attacking things, you gain adrenaline, which is essentially like a, just a, a power or buff, um, which, which, is, which can stack. You can get traits to have additional procs and adrenaline. So as you have high adrenaline, you, for example, regenerate health or you um, deal more damage, stuff like that. But when you max adrenaline or any point after you hit a couple times, you have a thing you can use, so a sixth skill. So you have the five normal weapon skills, so very low compared to the elementalist. Obviously, you're running around with uh, 20. Uh, but a five normal... Um, normal weapon skills with that burst and the burst does crazy things they're all fantastic they they can stun they can do a shitload of damage from close or range they can make you jump forward they can stun a large group of enemies they, they can do crazy stuff um which is cool and, and again it's very simplistic but it's very effective like the warrior is a very yeah effective i agree class. it's a good way to like really understand the combat mechanics of guild wars 2 yeah and, and, a, and yeah, beyond I, that, I, it's, I, I and i that. believe like that it, Go, go I was just gonna say, like, I, I agree. Like, it definitely has a lower, a low barrier for entry. Probably even lower than the elementalist barrier, barrier for entry, just because of the survivability that you kind of innately have by being a warrior. Um, but I think that is at the cost of it really having the unique, being well, and having the unique feel of Guild Wars Two, right? Especially I, in the I early would levels. Somewhat agree with that for the first couple levels. Um, the point where I think the game switches, though, for the warrior is once you hit about level twenty. So uh, this yeah, that's, will, that's every, way too far in. To yeah, it. yeah. I kind, I kind yeah. of agree. Well, you see, that's that's why I didn't like the elementalist because, like, it may get good once you get to like level ten and have all your skills unlocked for all the different weapon types and all the attunements. But it see, that's the awesome thing though with elementalist. I feel that. like is like you said that it's it's very samey with with other MMOs or whatever with other casters. The, where you see the difference, the very first difference you see, and you realize this is not just your, st- your standard WoW mage, is when you unlock your your second attunement, which I think is like level two or three, probably. I don't remember exactly, yeah. but I know by like seven, you already have all of them. Um, and for the warrior, like if you come from other warriors from other classes, the the time the first time you feel that's different, aside from the power fantasy of playing a warrior, like you're doing huge damage and taking barely any, and you create crazy survival, which is why I think will drive people beyond the first twenty levels. Um, that power fantasy element. Beyond that, the moment you take up a ranged weapon is the moment you th- you realize that hey, this warrior isn't the same as other warriors. Like you right, are a I capable like ranger, for example. The thing is, like you you want something new like warrior could be like oh this is really powerful but i don't think it'll be like oh this is a really cool class it'd be like yeah like i don't i don't, oh, think, yeah, you're gonna, I don't, think, I don't think you're gonna i don't come out of it and be like this is why yeah. guild wars 2 is better yeah not if you only play for right, 20 levels like, but once you hit past 20 levels that's when shit gets real that's when that, enemies that's, what, that's what we're saying though is we're talking about like you're talking about expecting new a new person to stick with this for 20 levels before they finally realize like okay this is why this game is so good like that's, I, I, that's a, that's I a agree. long I investment. Say that for the warrior, just that power power fantasy part will get most new players through those twenty levels. That's the thing, though. I don't, I don't very think it low will. Battery that's twenty levels. Yeah, that's, that's like thirty. Yeah, hours. I don't think it will because like you're you're talking about yeah, that's a pretty hefty investment. And and I mean, if they are playing this and, and they're like, okay, this is warrior. I'm wielding a sword. All right, now I'm wielding a shield and a sword, and I can shield bash, and I can. Like, All right, I, it's raid time. Go I back to wow. That it is a really like. The combat system of Guild Wars is very different from anything else. Yeah, the warrior is probably the best way. Yeah, to it's it's kind of it's also a good point because I think that um, elements of it will be yes, of course you're you're playing a warrior in that you're very simplistic. You, you definitely have this hallmarks of what the warrior has been in the games. Um, but as as Newbro was rightly pointing out, these are new players, so they'll also be adjusting to Guild Wars combat. And I think having that first first step of being something that's very familiar in, in many ways can help that transition as well. Like, for example, you have to get down what range means in Guild Wars 2. You have to, re- you have to know what range you can operate at and what the enemy is going to operate at and wh- what, how safe it is to stay in melee. Because there's no tanks in Guild Wars 2. Warrior is probably the best way to realize, hey, I can maybe take one hit in melee, as opposed to Elementalist, where you'll find yourself being one shot a lot if you go into melee as an Elementalist, for example. See, I would actually argue, like, like, like learning the uh, the stuff, like you were just saying, like, 
I, I would argue that actually Elementalist is probably the better way to learn that stuff even than, than the warrior. Elementalist is the harsher master. Uh, no. Elementalist is the harsher I master. Think guys, I think Durin might, might, might. might <laughs> <just know. laughs> Indeed. Well, I like Ellie too, though. and I, I agree to well, say that. That's, that's definitely not the only class. Definitely. That's definitely not the only class that I like. I, I, I do like the warrior. Um, my first character was actually the necromancer, and I really like that. I stuck with that for the first two beta weekends. Yeah, I just I, I'm saying specifically for a new player coming in, the Ellie I think has a lot of of potential to teach them. It has a lot of the potential to teach them what is different and new about Guild Wars Two, while still being mm-hmm. or if they want something while still being new, they'll play the familiar best. enough. That you know they can they can relate to this and they can have some general ideas of of where this might go or or where it is right now and maybe not where it's going to go because it's it's definitely going to go off left field compared to what they're used to pretty quickly. Um, but there's the familiarity there, similar to what the warrior has. But I feel like where it opens up and you and you kind of feel the differences is way way faster than the warrior does. Oh yeah, yeah, Possibly, definitely agree. Yeah. But the thing is with Ellie, like while you see and i guess feel the differences right away like i just didn't like it well beyond know. that like you do the have the problems with the unlock skills exactly game breaker like for yeah, example was, warrior no, i don't i don't know whether it was that but i just didn't well, no, really well, that's, like that's not a valid um, argument in this case if he, play, if he played <laughs> the level six he, he didn't get far enough to worry about i, I did not like the way it felt yeah so so yeah the, the unlock ability i didn't like the thing, way it felt I um know. definitely gets in the way of things because uh, discovering the multiple play types and play styles of the elementalist especially again coming to the new combat system of Guild Wars 2, is going to be very difficult when compared to the warrior because the warrior you by just switching weapons and very quickly you can very quickly discover well very quickly unlocked you can very quickly discover the different ways of playing as a warrior. You can play a very valid ranged warrior, mass conditions with the longbow, piercing shots with the rifle. Obviously, you, do, you get that later to to clear out enemies in a large area or, or in choke points. But you can you can definitely discover the ways of using the warrior in cl- a closer time frame than you are suggesting. I would say it is slower uh, so, than the elementalist, but I think it's a closer time frame than you're suggesting to get into the warrior as uh, in its complexity. I, th- I think a new person. Playing Guild Wars Two wants to see something that's. that's but if you start them off with the MMO. mesmer, like you're straight up going to be I, a new I, combat I, system, an entirely thing, different class. You're going to be completely fucking confused. No, no, start no, them no, with no. a but ranger just is, because it starts you with an axe. Mesmer have, will have no idea what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, at all. Like, I They'll did be completely know. confused. Right, right. But the thing is, I I had it perfectly fine, and the majority of people are. I've never heard any complaint about mesmer being. That's because no one plays mesmer. I I played some mesmer noob, and I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Well, like I didn't understand how uh, like I the the whole um, clone and illusion system like is very hard for your first time uh, with that class to to really grasp it and understand because, like the benefits of them. Like yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't realize until afterwards. That, that's something you you learn. As I didn't realize play. until afterwards that apparently like you want to shatter them as often as possible. Yeah, like their uptime is supposed to be very low. Like I was thinking, I was totally playing the other way around. I was playing like get as many of these things up as I possibly can. Because then they're going to tank all the damage for me while I damage. Apparently, that's, and that's not, not how you're true. Play the mesmer. Exactly. Like people will be completely confused. Like Trav, I think Zoomy Ramen had exactly the same problem. They they thought that you had to keep the uh, the images up, and then you realize that the enemies kind of just mow through them and just keep continue to you, and you're oh, a soft right. caster class. And you learn that that's the wrong thing. Like you learn. Well, through making but again, it's it's a very not? Well, it's, it's a very harsh master. Again, like like the elementalist, where, where you're kind of learning through failure rather than learning through adaptation, which is what I feel the warrior or guardian right, comes but from. You, you're not. Like you know early what? on in the game, when when you're learning the class, I feel like people because it's different and completely new, you're encouraged to keep on playing and learn more about the class. Like I, I definitely felt more of a motivation to play Mesmer. You I also to like to play games class. that are very punishing, and I think that in general, for most normal people who aren't into creepy anime, uh, <laughs> they <laughs> tend to be discouraged. Punishing, they tend to be anime? discouraged by. Uh, punishing things like that and they're just going to give up no i'm well, i'm just talking about the concept of mesmer and like the different kinds of skills it has available i, I think just, you're it, coming at it as someone cool. from guild wars one and playing guild wars because i think a lot of the reasons that no one's really argue, like um complaining about the mesmer is because most people have played the mesmer as their second or third tried class during these betas like most people i definitely tried mesmer after i'd already tried guardian um necromancer and warrior like, it was the fourth thing i tried um, so a lot of people have already gotten used to the combat systems, like every, everything about Guild Wars 2 that makes it different in terms of like just very basic combat. So when they jump into the Elementalist, it's it's not as ridiculously new or over the top to them. So they can kind of get that transition. Did you play Elements, uh, Mesmer first, for example, Noob? 
Uh, no, I played after. Yeah, so like to some extent, we don't really have the perspective of someone who's completely new. And in my opinion, right. it would be very difficult for someone very new to jump into the mesmer. I don't know, man. I'm adding a second. Anyway, book, I want to get to the other classes. I definitely want to add to the <laughs> the other classes. Um, but just just in terms of these, I'm gonna add a second. Book, just saying. <laughs> just in terms of these, what do you what do you guys think after this discussion? Would would you change sides? I'm actually personally leaning more towards the elementalist as my recommendation now. After I'm, I'm going guardian. Those arguments. <laughs> so, guardian is your recommendation. I'm like. I might go guardian or warrior just because, no, like, no, stick guardian, I don't know. Stick guardian. If you could stick somehow, guardian. if you could somehow boost the DPS of the guardian just like a tiny bit, it'd be perfect. Maybe. It's it's low health, kind of gets. It's, but it has the, 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 anyway. The, the issue with that is that that goes against like the. I mean, the, the class is not intended original. Like the the idea of that class is never really to be a DPS class. So obviously, you can build one that way, but that's not. The yeah, idea yeah, but it. I mean, but it, but if you if you built it that way, like right away. I think it would show off all the different kinds of playstyles that you could pick. Maybe, but like, you would make that well. class too strong by doing as, as much as as much as well, one. If you class started with them with a great you just sword, just do it for like ten <laughs> minutes so my friend can check it out, and then that's it. If you, yeah, and then hot fix it right then. <laughs> so and then. those those what said, um, Darren? What do you still stick with the elements, or do you see the um, the wisdom of the guardian or warrior or other options out there? Uh, well, other definitely mesmer. not mesmer because I think that's just fucking batshit. I kind of agree. To start somebody off. <laughs> you're you're batshit, um, but I. Can, no, fuck <laughs> yeah. you. I can see some of the arguments for warrior, but I still do feel like elementalist is really kind of the all around um, best option for an, a person coming in who has played in the most. You're elementalist fanboy. Why don't you get? So let's get, get to the other classes. You've done four of the eight. <laughs> you freak. You freak. You've done four of the eight classes. Let's get to the others. Um, so the actual first class I played was the necromancer. Do, what, what are your thoughts on the necromancer? Would you recommend it to a new player? Necromancer, I I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I would not recommend it to a new player though. Uh, th- really? Th- Why? Well, I, I because of what a necromancer tends to be in games, you tend to want to play the minion spec, right. um, and and that was what I what I originally played. Now, granted, I've learned since then um, how best to spec things, and you kind of like I wasn't I wasn't putting traits in properly into stuff. I mostly did World of the World, so I didn't really have a whole lot of traits anyway. Um, and so basically, I didn't really have a build that went well with it. And so my minions mostly just kind of felt fucking useless. And so and just remember all back in then, all, the like, pet AI wasn't fixed yet. Like it, it oh, was, that's true, it too. Was that, that is true, too. Yeah, yeah pet, pet AI was pretty pretty bad. Um, but so I mostly, I, I mostly ran with a, a staff necro. And like the problem with it is, again, like that, that tends to be the one you probably will use the most for the most part because it, it, it most feels like a necromancer class um, yeah again if we're talking about a new person here and it's a very passive condition building aoe based play style definitely and, and not something i think that is really something that a new player is going to come in and be like this is fucking awesome what do you feel about the fact that they gave i think it was an axe to start with what do you think of that i, I don't know uh, axe is actually it turns out is it's actually really, really good powerful weapon. it's really, really awesome good weapon. <laughs> but you don't realize it at first yeah like exactly. again part of it because you're playing a necromancer and so as soon as you get a staff you're like I'm fucking changing to that <laughs> and, and like, so, it's, it's weird because like as a necromancer um, I kind of went to the same thing because it was the first actually the first thing I played the second thing I played was warrior but um, when I, when I, made, when I made, actually was guardian Anyway, when I made a necromancer, um, what are you saying? when I made a necromancer, the first thing I did was it kind of sets your baseline. The first Engineer. thing you, you kind of get is the axe, and that's the first thing you have experience with. So it sets your baseline in terms of expectations for that class. So you walk up to something, and it's a mid-range weapon, which is odd in the first place because mm. it's a necromancer. Um, and you're doing weird ranged attacks with your melee weapon, and you're doing pretty good damage. You're killing things relatively quickly. So then you switch to like maybe your other options. So for example, staff and dagger, and they are entirely different from the axe they are they yeah. are very different yeah um, it's 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 a class it's a class of many facets and i, I like that about the necromancer i think the necromancer is a fantastic class it's just that i don't think it's a great way to start because when you're playing a necromancer especially with um that like you do have weapon swapping you definitely do have the same advantage as the warrior of being able to play in different ways at any given time but like just the whole thing of um just the, the expectations it sets in terms of using minions or, or using the axe, for example, versus the staff, or just how different the necromancer's staff is from other iterations or games with necromancers and how they play with staffs. Mm-hmm. It just it's just weird for a lot of new players. And I, I kind of agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like the the whole idea of, of again the staff play, especially because that is something that new players would gravitate towards. 
Um, this that whole idea of because I, I used it even in you know PVE. So I'm grabbing a single target. I have all these minions around me, and I'm just like dropping. Like I felt like I was playing a fucking hunter and wow. Like I was just dropping like <laughs> traps all around in front of them and then pulling. And then watching them run through the traps and then just kind of dodging around a bunch while I waited for them to take enough damage to die. <laughs> yeah, and, and exactly. That, and that's weird because like you're given the axe to start with. And I, I, never, I never expected myself, I always expect myself to go back to the axe eventually. But then I kind of stuck with the staff because I like the range on it. And it just, I, I just never felt the power fantasy in one case and in the second case like i just didn't feel like a necromancer yeah it didn't feel like a necromancer like other than other than just i don't know the staff staff animations 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 and that's another reason why i think a lot of people will just stick with the staff is because turning into a scythe when you use your abilities like that's fucking awesome yeah it's so cool um which is weird that it's the only weapon that does that (laughs) yeah like it's only it's only necro weapon that changes kind of its its look when you're or that dramatically at least whenever you're using your abilities so then we have the class mechanic, which is Death Shroud. Um, what did you, you think of Death Shroud? Did, did anyone else who play, play Necromancer New Barama, did you try Necromancer out? Uh, I, I made a level one Necromancer. <laughs> okay, so you don't... And then I exited it before I finished the story. <laughs> and Shinboy? <laughs> well, not that I didn't like it. I just, I just ran nope, out of time. Nope, I haven't touched so it. You'll get to the other class in a sec. But, um, so Necromancer, the Death Shroud ability, in my opinion, is very good for new players, but also very weird because most new players wouldn't realize to hit f1 what are, what are your thoughts duran i spent the entire first one and a half beta weekends never hitting that button <laughs> exactly my thoughts i did the same thing with the thief like fuck stealing why the yeah, fuck would i do that right yeah it with and, the it's, dagger. and it's crazy because what if a new player ever hit f1 and realized that he gets a whole new set of skills which i think should be unlocked at the start i, I, I kind of find it weird yeah that's weird that you gotta work those up too that's so fucking especially given that like yeah. you have nowhere to look at those abilities to see what they are so the first time yeah, you right. use death shroud and you get in there and, and you see that you have all these abilities you're going to spend your entire death shroud just sitting there mousing over the abilities trying to see what they are and trying to memorize yeah. them and then the next time you're in death shroud you're going to forget what those abilities were because you only saw them for <laughs> nine ten seconds or whatever like it's just it's a yeah it's a bad mechanic i think they, they really need to just have them all unlocked from the get-go yeah i kind of same, I kinda with, same with death shroud itself the the idea of it giving those new players like a bunch of bunch of more survivability a cool second life bar is a, it's a really interesting class mechanic i just don't know if it's particular implementation at the moment really recommends itself to a new player in, in my opinion any, any further thoughts during well, uh, no, that's pretty much. Uh, I, I pretty much agree. Like the just yeah. the class mechanic doesn't feel like a, like what you would expect out of a ne- ne- necromancer. Um, and again, it is a very yeah. good class. I, I absolutely enjoy. It. It's one of my top three at this point, knocking the thief down. Um, <laughs> so I, you know, it's, I'm definitely not not dogging on the class or anything. I, I completely plan to play one. I just don't know that for a new player coming into Guild Wars Two, you know, with no previous knowledge of the game, I, I don't. I do not think that's a good class to start with. Uh, yeah, and well, I'd say it's it's a it would be not it would not be my most recommended. It is a good class to start with because you do have that survivability and you, you do end up doing a lot in team battles for stuff. But it's not the one I would say would be my number one. I'd recommend. I'll just say that. Yeah, yeah. and with the guardian. Yeah, and, and with that we can we can move to one of the other classes. So thief. Um, I know. Yeah. Thief. Thief yeah. is pretty, 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 pretty good. good. Thief is pretty cool. I, I haven't played one yet. All right, the thief's pretty good. Let's move on. <laughs> I, I haven't played a thief yet, um, so I, I'm not I'm not certain as to what my stance would be uh, in terms of just starting out with it. I've never got thief that is chance. Actually, a pretty good. Tr- I would I would recommend. Yeah, thief, thief is, is fairly yeah. straightforward. Um, but so how much did everyone like, spend with the thief? Like new Brahma, how much? How much I got two level fifteen. Uh, like I got level to level twelve, I think. thirty something. Wow, Shimbo got thirty. Right, so so, what are your thoughts here on? Yep. Did, was it the first class you played, or like what are your thoughts on the thief? Uh, the first class I played was Guardian way back when I totally did not play it in one of the press betas. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, starting with the actual betas, I played Thief. Um, at first I was really iffy on the melee because it kind of sucked and you kind of died a lot, even if you were decent at the game. Um, Maybe so you're I just really, I like, I never died. Dual pistols. No, no, this was back in like the, oh, when melee was fucked. Pistols. Yeah. When, when melee was all <laughs> kinds of fucked. And then they fixed it, and I discovered dual daggers and made like an AOE dot build and just tore through <laughs> everything. And it was amazing. I, I my favorite build was just the short bow. The short bow is the greatest. Yeah, the short bow on thief the sh- is probably the short bow for me. Yeah, my favorite, favorite weapon. It is you are you have full movement and oh, oh 
God. <laughs> Everything's flexible and moving. No, I, I, I agree with Shinboy. Like, I think my favorite part about the Thief is that nothing yeah, runs on yeah. cooldown. It's yeah. great. Yeah, it's I, I agree with Shinboy that the... Uh, um, the, the sword bow is the, well. The sword bow is really good for movement, but yeah, double daggers is absolutely where it's at. You just you, the animations. You feel so fucking badass with those abilities. Yeah. Um, I wish the double pistols were better. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of agree. The dual pistols are are decent. They're, yeah, I feel like they could they be a could lot. Be better. I've heard like dagger. Sorry, no sword pistol or dagger pistol was really fantastic for. Anyway, but the point is like, how, how do you guys feel with? It? I don't know. I don't, I don't like mixing melee and ranged. I don't know. Yeah, because you're crazy. I don't like doing it's it. It's because you're both shit. Um, uh, be- <laughs> but I would say no, because like uh, no, if I'm like if I'm you, if I'm standing next to a dude, why the fuck? Because you're a thief weapon? and you're squishy. And if I'm standing at range, I have this melee weapon that is useless. Well, like, well it's it's for three. For so so the thief, the they have two interesting class. Mechanics. So they work differently from other classes. You're, you're looking at um, they have initial system so that their skills, their left hand skills, so the first five weapon skills do not have cooldowns. You have instead an initiative system. So you have a bar. I think it starts with 15 or 12 points of initiative, whatever. 10. Isn't it 10? Uh, no, I think it's more than that. Uh, um, so like that. whatever it is, you use a skill and it has a specific initiatives cost and that will drain some of your initiative. And that has a slow regeneration rate. So it's essentially like mana. It's like, a, it's like, mana. like mana. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's one of the very few classes with that. But what you get from that is um, you kind of have a an interesting play style compared to other classes. So getting into the game, playing as a thief, it is very different, possibly one of the most different from other classes, just in terms of base mechanics. Because like, you're dealing with very low, co- like no cooldowns, and you're dealing with both melee and range. Interesting combinations because the short bow wouldn't act as as you'd expect most short bows do. Like it's all about movement, teleportation, mass conditions, that kind of stuff. But when you shoot the short bow, it, your arrows go really weird, and I was scared. Like, <laughs> just yeah, they like blank. zigzag. Yeah. But beyond that, so the second element to that class was interesting. Is when you have um, when you're using two weapons at the same time, so a main hand and an offhand. The middle skill, skill three, actually changes depending on what what combination you're using. Oh yeah, that that's. Um. So it's it's. I I went. When I figured that out, I realized I had to go back and unlock that. Skill <laughs> did you? Oh wow! Oh, oh, I did not know that. But either way, like my main argument is because I actually really love the Thief's class. Like it's kind of a different approach to survivor build than the others because unlike the Elementalists, where you, where you kind of have to um, spec into be a evasive tank, uh, Thief kind of comes pre-spec to be an evasive tank. And what I mean by that is that you kind of avoid damage to survive and can do it so. Confi- uh, sorry. Um, effectively and consistently in order to like just be in melee range all the time as opposed to a warrior which is based on taking hits or a guardian which is taking some hits and then healing up like it's very it's an evasive tank and it comes pre-spec that way to a lot of extent but my main argument to the thief isn't how awesome it is because it's a great class it's just that um it just works entirely differently to any of the others especially on that left hand which is where most people spend their time what, yeah. what are you guys thoughts on that? I, I i absolutely agree go ahead Luke. Um, yeah, because of the lack yeah. of cooldowns. Yeah. Well, and that's that's the thing. Like, like there's the like the lack of cooldowns and the initiative bar can feel similar again for for people coming into this maybe from other MMOs. Um, however, they are so very different from the typical playstyle of Guild Wars Two um, that you're not really introducing them to how Guild Wars Two's overall combat really feels works. Um, yeah. Plus the the kind of added uh, hurdle of the number three skill changing like it does. And then also the way the steel mechanic works. Like, it wasn't until... I think I eventually just had to ask somebody, I think in Guild or something, like, how that... Because <laughs> it, it kept changing. Like, I would use steel to, like, shadow step over to them. That's how I was using it. And then, like, I would next thing I would, I would try to go use it again. And instead, it, like, it wanted to throw down some poison cloud thing. I'm like, what the... Like, how does this ability work? And I didn't realize <laughs> you were actually, like, stealing an ability or an item that caused an ability every time. So what you... It's annoying because like there are some that are basically kind of worthless, and so what you end up having to I do. I thought it was stealing an item from their inventory, and <laughs> getting getting what well, the drop might be. I'm gonna steal all of your credit card information. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's kind of what's kind of works. bad about that again for a new player is that there are some of those abilities that are just kind of bad, and so what you end up having to do is like after you've killed the person or whatever, you have to essentially waste the ability so that you can restart the cooldown so that you can eventually you know use your uh, your steal again as the shadow step that you're intending to use it for. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I will say something though. Like, even though the steel might be useless, I would say on average from all the classes I've played, um, the thief had the most useful utility skills. Oh, there's some, there's some pretty great ones. Oh, in there. Snare, snare, the snare, scorpion wire, the scorpion wire. Scorpion wire. Oh, yeah. Dungeons, were, were you pl- like, were you beyond an actual useful? You were the one. Yeah, it, it was, was it was me yeah, and uh, subjugation yeah, when we clutch. were dueling it. It was ridiculously useful. Clutch. The thing is, 
what Shin Boy because would lay way, down is the way they don't work. Yeah, yeah. You can explain it. You, go ahead. Okay. The way they work is when you pull a mob, if it's standing like in a group of two or three, most of the time mobs will pull on their own. So as a thief, you can just scorpion wire to you, dodge back, and he'll like keep walking towards you. So you can aggro him easily by himself. It makes dungeons oh. so much easier because you can take everything. We one double at a time. scorpion wired units. It was ridiculous. <laughs> oh man! It was so well, hard. scorpion wired is essentially what you expect from Mortal Kombat. It is scorpions thing? It pulls them towards you, right? Which I love That's that they it. called it scorpion wire. Yeah. That's so oh, I love it. Well, scorpion wire was oh, in really? the first game as an assassin yeah. skill. I don't but both are based in Mortal Kombat, I believe. Yeah. It, yeah, I I love the thief is great. I, it's just, it just it just it just it just wouldn't be what I recommend to new players. I, yeah, there's, I love just, the there's, there's so much different I mean, about it compared to like everything else in the game, and and too much that like again like I I know I used familiarity as as kind of a a point for why uh, elementalist would work, but I think with the thief um, because it doesn't have the cooldowns because it has the initiative instead, it's a little bit too much familiarity with other uh, MMOs, and you don't really get a feel for how. That's a very Guild good Wars, point. Guild War 2, Guild Wars Two's uh, whole um, non-resource cooldown-based combat actually works. Yeah, but in terms of just enjoying the combat oh, yeah. experience, I found Thief extremely. Yeah, well, I'd say that absolutely. every single class is have enjoyable. Fun, I mean, we don't have to. Yeah, like we don't have except to, the Guardian. You know, <laughs> you're an idiot. Shut up! Shut up! So we're pretty happy about <laughs> the thief and necromancer, and, and they're but they're just different, definite reasons why we would recommend. It. Let's move into the next one. What haven't we hit on yet? Ranger. ranger. I love the ranger. Um. Okay. See, I recommend how, everyone start with ranger. Fix, how did they fix? Um, pets? I haven't tried them since. That's my problem. Because if if, if um, pets are pretty good. If they haven't changed it to a, a big enough extent, I would highly not recommend Ranger as someone. I don't know, starting. like, my pets, I played Ranger this past beta weekend, like, up to, like, level 17 or something. My pets rarely died if I was smart about it, right, but, but they just sort of ran right, but off. the thing is, like, again, a new person first joining as a Ranger, assuming their pet could take some damage, and you yeah. don't know, like, how to control your pet very well, that could cause a person a lot. Well, like the heal skill, the heal skill that they give you to start off with heals you and your pet. So I, I think the, the ranger what? in general is a pretty class act from the start. Like you start with the axe, which is a mid range weapon. Yeah, I was going to say uh, if you want to start something that's going to blow your <laughs> mind, you start a ranger thinking, okay, this is a range class, and then you're just like, what the fuck? They gave me an axe, and then you're like, what the fuck is a range? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, it's a throwing you're axe. Throwing, I'm like, what? Like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> And I originally hated that because I thought the axe was... I think it was actually underpowered in the first BW. But now it's an amazing weapon. It's an AoE main attack. Oh, fuck. I'd never fucking use that piece of shit. <laughs> the axe is great. What's wrong with you? But yeah, no. Um, like, the, the Ranger is a pretty class act from the start. The, uh, I'm pretty much sure it has the exact same advantages as the Warrior. So there's very many ways to play in all three range types as a Ranger. You have mid-range, long-range, and short-range. And you can swap between your weapons. So you can play in multiple ranges. There's all those advantages. It's very um, reminiscent of the Hunter and stuff from other um, games, from what I've heard. It is, and that's Um, actually one of the issues with it. Because, again, the Hunter... Even non-tanky pets can still take a few hits and are generally intelligent enough to not... Maybe not intelligent, but they have ways of, of mitigating damage. And so you don't... You tend to think your pet is fairly self-sufficient. You don't have to worry about them too much. Um, and that is absolutely not the case in this game. This game, your your pet is a yep. fucking wet piece of paper. I mean, it's just... It's, it's, it depends, it yeah. So Unless you get a fast. bear. A few times I had to switch pets just because I didn't know where my pet went. <laughs> so that's another thing. Like, aside from the fact that um, the Rangers has excellent combat action options and in higher level play the pets are great because you by then you'd have learned how to micromanage them properly the pet ai is a point of contention i'm personally a person who never wants to rely on any form of ai except for maybe the mesmers which is the AI is supposed to be kind of kind of dumb because it's supposed to be um only there for a very short period and then shattered um but from necromancers and uh rangers to some extent i love both classes but to some extent i don't like relying on ai or asking others to rely on ai when i recommend a class so, so but Shinboy, you play the most recently how do, how do you feel like it sounds like you had a pretty bad experience with the pet ai no like the only time it was really i mean if i was just like going through you know by myself just doing events that i happen to stumble upon taking on one or two dudes at a time the pet was really useful because he, they could take a certain, like, a, a decent amount of damage while I could just AoE around them. And if he got close to dying, I could just switch out right. to a different one. Um, it was only, like, a lot of times a 
pets will just, especially in PvP, it happened. We'll just get locked onto a target and just follow them to the ends of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> um, like like I said, there's a few times where I switched my pet not because my pet was low. A lot of times it was at full health. It was just I did a quick 360 of uh, my camera and could not <laughs> fucking find him anywhere. <laughs> Fido, Fido, where are you? God damn it, come back! Um, <laughs> like I I was I was like, where did where did, in God's name did you go? But I love the fact that it starts to well the human. I'm not sure if it's different for other uh, races, but the human starts with a bear. Which is awesome because not only do you have this huge, adorable, cuddly bear. The Savari one's oh, yeah, awesome. Oh, you have the dog, the the plant dog. Yeah, the the, the, the fern yeah, wolf. That, or that is yeah. So they start with the cool pets, but the reason I'm pointing out the bear specifically is that it's a very survivable, pretty tanky pet that also has um, a condition removal on its active skill. So to to explain the um, rangers in general, uh, their past class mechanic, if you haven't figured it out already, is pets. Like they're a pet class. But not as much as, like, for example, the Necromancer, which is built, some ways can be built around having lots of pets. Mainly just having about having, sorry, it's all about having one or two, because they, I'll get to that in a second, pets that they focus on. So how rangers work is you have your normal skill bar, which can be switched at any time, like any other, or m- many of the other classes. Um, but you also have your pet, which has its own kind of small skill bar at the top. So pets are quite complex in Guild Wars 2. There are many families of pets which have very many basic skills which are different from one another for example a eagle will act and behave and have normal skills very different to a bear um but you have one active skill which you can hit to make your pet use it um on your demand with a cooldown and you can also swap pets so you can have two active pets in any given moment and the rest are benched and when you switch between them it's like a pokemon it's like a pokemon's um and we switched. And we switched to. <laughs> of course, noob the anime fan would bring up Pokemon. I, I, I love Pokemon. Fair, I've never played or owned a Pokemon game. I all. played all of them almost. Anyway. Well, fuck you. Yeah, Why Pokemon's I'm awesome. Around. Nintendo okay. is made by Japan, and I. <laughs> I don't like anything. Says the anime fan. I don't watch anime. I don't watch anime. Um, I deny anything. You so when you swap between the pets, they res in the background. So at the start, even though there's some weird pet AI things which can result in some of your pets dying, swapping your pets when you unlock that ability reses the background pet and brings out an alive pet, um, which is good. So you, you, there, there are very many positives to the ranger. I just don't particularly feel that a pet class is the best place to start I, that's the only real thing i have against it Sh- shinboy do, do you think you'd recommend a ranger to a first player uh yeah because i mean the pets don't really die that easily right away so the game gives you a good chance to get a handle on especially not the bear the bear be, can take you know, some hits for it. you it's pretty awesome for, for i some, mean the, the fern wolf wasn't yeah. bad either for some reason i found so. ranger extremely boring <laughs> despite the fact I, I put in a good like a thousand five hundred. See, I, I I thought so too, but then I took a longbow. Oh, dude, longbows are just like, righteous. Right, this is pretty great. <laughs> They're nice, especially with the new buffs to them. They're gonna. I'm, I'm a main oh, ranger. I'm a main ranger. Also, and also, even though it got nerfed pretty hard, I picked up a great sword and used that. I guess was a three skill where you sort of run at your thing and like sprout <laughs> eagle wings, and it looks yeah, so dumb. The, rangers and kind of number four spawns like a giant bear, and it looks so <laughs> dumb, but. Well, it's Ranger has awesome. a lot of the advantages of the warrior in that they're a medium other class, so they're not particularly high armor, but all their skills are, very many of their skills have an element of evasiveness to them. So they kind of have elements of the evasive, ta- evasive tank and the actual tank, because it can actually make them quite survivable. So you do have the element of power fantasy, because Rangers do a lot of damage. They probably do more damage than any other class I can name, except for maybe some specs of the Elementalist. Like, you, you can really lay waste to enemies as a ranger. So you do have that element of power fantasy. You do have that familiarity of, like, a pet class kind of thing. Um, pets are pretty nice. Like, I, I love my little happy bear. He was adorable. Um, I just, uh, personally, it's just not where I'd sit at because of that AI thing. Durin, what, what are your thoughts? Um, I, I think my biggest issue is, like, like same same as yours like the ai thing that like i don't i'm i'm not a big on pet classes anyway it's actually why it was kind of weird that my first one was a minion necro um yep <laughs> but it was same. more it was, it was more so just to see like how the necro played out cuz i i had never played a necro um in an mmo like i've always liked them in you know diablo and stuff like that but i've never played it in this this kind of setting so right. I, I decided to give it a shot but anyway uh with with the ranger yeah it's mostly just like i don't like I don't like having to rely on a pet in order to be optimal. Um, as an option, be optimal, yeah, yeah. Like as an, as an option, an optional build, I'm okay with that because I can just choose not to do it. Um, but the same reason why I never played a hunter back in WoW, I just I don't like having to rely on the pet, pet AI and having to babysit the pet 
um, and worry about, oh, now they've died. Now my damage is going to go down by 30% or some shit like that. Like, I, I'd, I'd rather my my ability to do my thing be based on me alone. Yeah, and, and see, I felt like that wasn't really, like, that big of an issue, especially in PvP. Like, my pet would fucking <laughs> run off, not knows where, and I would still be able to, like, easily DPS someone yeah, down well, with a long Rangers do like, incredible amounts of damage, but I think a very interesting point here is as... Something that Nubarab kind of touched on, um, and Durin definitely. With pets and yours too, as a ranger, you can't opt to not take your pet. You can't be effective right. without your pet. It's not that you can use that um, slot for different skills or more utility skills. It is literally the class mechanic. Uh, Nubarab, I mean, you played, what, 1,500 hours of ranger in the original Guild Wars. And in, in, in the original yes. Guild Wars, you could opt to drop your pet. What are your thoughts? Um, so I spent a good, like, five hours with pets. Um, <laughs> in the original Guild Wars. Wars. <laughs> okay. Because um, it used up a skill cause, slot. Cause it, yeah, and the fact that if your pet died in the original Guild Wars, oh, God. all of your skills would be put on. Yeah, cloud. for a second there. Um, imagine if they did that in That would be in so... Anyway. There would be riots on the <laughs> John Peters well, people would, would just not play. But, so, so coming from the Ranger in Guild Wars 1, why, why, did, you, why did Guild Wars 2's Ranger not really... I, Maybe it's just because I've played way too much okay, in the right. original game, but I I just did not see anything new. Right. I mean, I that said, I've I have not played enough of the character. In fact, I haven't used the longbow yet. Oh, dude. So I will definitely reform my opinions once I get a lot more into Rangers. But at this moment, I would not recommend Ranger to a new person. I, I'm especially because of the pets. totally and longbow axe kind of guy when it comes to Rangers. But anyway, I, I we've talked we touched a lot about it. It's, it's one of those classes like the thief where we actually really like the class here, except for maybe a noob and. In general, like, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that we don't necessarily think it's amongst our top couple we'd recommend to new players. And, and I think, what was it? Maybe one more class? Engineer. I would Engineer. Recommend All right. I forgot. I, I, engineer. I fucking know jack shit about how the engineer board. works. Tell me about engineer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have no fucking clue. <laughs> Why is your name Engineer Shinboy on Steam? Because if you look at my picture, it's Michael Fassman oh, nice. from Prometheus. And those people hey. were called the engineers. And also, I'm an hey. engineer major. But so, did you play any engineer? Okay, so I, I played some engineer. I no New Barama, did you works. play any engineer? Um, I did, and then I fell off a cliff in Radisson. All oh, right, that was, that, was, <laughs> that was when you were doing that. New, uh, Durin, did you play? Yeah, any? I, yeah, I played a bit of engineer. So, what do you think? Uh, that class is way too fucking weird for a new person to come in. So it's just this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so so similar right, to the not. elementalist, they they don't have a weapon swap. Instead instead of having the attunements like elementalist has, uh, they have kits they can swap between, um, and the kits will basically completely change out your abilities um, while you're in that kit. Um, and that playstyle is very weird <laughs> and takes a lot of getting used to. Yeah. And I just I would not fucking <laughs> recommend that to somebody coming into this game for the first time. Um. <laughs> Neither would I. That's probably why I haven't played it. Yeah, it absolutely. Also- and it's yeah. one of those classes that, like, from what I've been hearing, it, it definitely is something that if you get it, you can just fucking destroy faces with that thing. Yeah. But most people either don't get it or don't give it a chance to get it. I would say I would say Engineer is the class that I've come across at least. Yeah, in absolutely. I, I've seen I, a very small handful of them. Yeah, I kind of have to. But the ones that I have seen are usually pretty tough to oh, take Oh, yeah. Down. Dude, Engineers are... Pretty much all the classes we named, in my opinion, are viable in PvP. I haven't, I've never seen, I've never looked at the class except for maybe some iterations of Thief, but not the most recent one that I think is not viable in PvP. It, just, it does just come down to that whole initial thing of whether this class is likely to kind of attune themselves to new players. Like an engineer, as, as Duran said, because when I jumped to the engineer, um, it starts you off with, I believe, a pistol, and a pistol is the an amazing weapon on engineer it's it's essentially mm-hmm. a mini rifle for the warrior like it's aoe damage on the first hit um you, you do shit, shit loads of conditions with it you do shit loads of damage with it it's, it's just amazing but then that, that's pretty cool you're like oh this class is, is pretty awesome but then as you start getting more skills you realize like hey i don't have a weapon spot that's okay and for a new player that's obviously a negative because you want to introduce them to that concept to some extent um but also you you have like uh, kit skills which entirely change your first five skills again and but you actually have to equip them on your utility bar and when you equip something in utility bar you realize that there's a new skill above your um, weapon bar uh, which is f123 um th- th- those are a- a- associated with, with what you have on your 
utility bar. And even just saying this, I'm getting tongue-tied and confused because... I'm, I'm, Wait, hold on, hold on. I'm confused. <laughs> okay, so, hold on. So say you have your seven skill. That's a kit. Mm-hmm. So that seven skill changes your first when, five. When you act- no, 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 no. When, no, you, no. when you activate that kit, then it changes your first five abilities. Yeah. Um, and then there's also like F1 abilities and stuff that you can use that are associated to that kit. I believe even outside of that kit. Right. Yeah. So, so it's okay. called a tool belt. Oh God, this is fuck. <laughs> fuck. It's so like for instance, if you have yeah, so you have seven, eight, and nine, right, as your utilities. Those are each going to be different kits. So you'll also have F one, F two, and F three. And F one is associated to your seven skill, and it's a, a an ability that you can use regardless of what kit you're in, or even if you're not in a kit. Um, F two for for um, you know utility skill eight, and and you know same for nine with F three. Um, well, I can't remember then, if. There was four of them. I think you actually there have might one be a to heal as well. That, yeah. yeah, there might be a fourth one. Um, but, you know, when you activate, so like you hit the number seven key, uh, what that will do then is that will activate that kit. And so now your first five abilities are all abilities now based on that kit. So if it's the flamethrower button, now all of you're basically now equipping a flamethrower and all of your abilities are flamethrower based abilities. Well, let's, let's give an example here. So you have a, a person that just started the game. I think one of the first kits you get is the flamethrower. Or might not be. It might, might no, be I believe it's grenades. the grenades. Grenade grenades. So w- you start off, you have your five skills, and you don't have a weapon swap. You have your heal, and then you, ha- you put in your grenades. So when you put in your grenades the first time, you realize that by putting anything in your utility slots as an engineer, it's actually giving you two abilities, not just the one. So you put it there, and you actually have a new skill above your weapon bar associated with that kit, which is entirely separate to that kit. Like you can use that outside of the kit without having any like any negative effects. Like that, that's what it's for. It's just giving you a second skill, essentially. But then you, when you equip that kit, suddenly you no longer have your weapon skills, but you have grenade toss and a bunch of different skills associated to that kit. And obviously, you have other kits. So you have like flamethrowers later on. You have um, a, a tool, a, a web a uh, kit. Turrets. I think a toolbox, a toolbox, which is like a okay. wrench and some other stuff. It's like the melee option for the engineer. It's like a couple of interesting stuff there. But um, and then you have turrets, which is an entirely different thing as well. Like you can drop turrets, um, and they essentially act as mini pets, but stationary pets when they they fire enemies. Shoot you with human yeah, bullets. Yeah, exactly. Like the the engineer is a great class, and I, I'm sorry to to make it sound like we are artificially increasing what we believe it's um it's an understandability or their uh, the weird. Oh no, there's the no class. artificial here. That that is a very yeah. It is one of the more uh, difficult classes to understand coming into it. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, especially once you get that. Yeah, kit. I know like way too much about this game, and I have no idea <laughs> what the fuck's going on. It's like, it's a good class, but just a. Uh, some some elements of it aren't immediately apparent, and in ways I don't particularly appreciate. It's not for new people. Yeah, it, it has a very high people. barrier for entry, I would say. Especially a, like yeah, I said, best once way to you get it. like it feels okay, it feels fine, it feels you know fairly safe. You know, you you have your pistol, you, like you said, you you have your first five abilities, you're doing good and everything, and then as soon as you get that first kit, and you like use that kit, That's it amazing. just completely like breaks down. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I think specifically for a new player, just will completely break down, and they're gonna be like, "What the fuck? Like, how?" <laughs> it's, <ugh. laughs> well, it's it's not that because oh, it's, like it's that somewhat, some elements of that. Like you, you, I think one of the first reactions I had when equipping a kit was like, "Hey, cool." Um, because I was expecting, like, Engineer was one of the last classes I played. So I knew that this kind of stuff would happen, and I was like, "Hey, cool! I can use these skills and all that kind of stuff." But um, I. I love the idea of kits, and I love the idea of um, turrets, but introducing both of those to a new character, a new person playing the game, and also um, having that as different to the other classes as it is. Like, for example, there's nothing else with turrets, I believe. There's nothing else with a tool bar, the tool kit, or tool belt, sorry. There's nothing else with kits. Like, there's just so many elements of it which are different to the other classes that even though I love the class in general, and I want to go back to it at some point, um, probably like fourth or fifth down my, on my list. But um, I don't think it's the best in terms of just like introducing a player to Guild Wars 2. It is, however, there are benefits to it. Like there's some elements of it, like, you know, um, New Brahma's argument for the Mesmer, which is you want something that's pretty unique to Guild Wars 2. I'd argue that the Engineer is actually also very unique to Guild Wars 2. I'd argue that there's very little else like it. You do have turret costs in other games, obviously, but there's very else, li- else well, very little things like it in terms of a fantasy Engineer. Like I haven't seen yeah. that much um it's the ideas behind like the the way it accomplishes its task the way it does things is different from how engineers or technical classes in other games it's to more them. like a magical engineer. yeah and like the shield for example it's like pseudo yeah, yeah, like an alchemist 
builder. Exactly. Like the shield, for example, is like this this weird thing where it, it blocks skills, but then it kind of reflects them on the enemy in a kind of weird magical kind of effect way. It, it, it looks really cool. I, I'm, I'm tripping over worlds now because we're at three hours and I'm quite tired. But yes, no, it's, it's a very cool class. I just... It's one thirty in the morning. <laughs> yeah, but yes, I, I personally love the engineer, but wouldn't recommend it. That, that, that's pretty much all I can say. But it's it's pretty cool. I want to delve deep, deep, deeper into it. So that's pretty much all the classes that we've hit on there. So going back to our original arguments, um, I believe my recommendation to new people was the warrior. Um, News was the mesmer. Durin's was the elementalist, and Shinboy was the guardian. I personally side on the side of Durin. I, I think the elementalist is probably a good way. Do, do, anyone want to closing comments? Anyone? I'm switching mine to the ranger because the pet AI is not actually not that bad. Not that and bad. the ranger's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool class. Um, especially yeah, when you is. when you go into melee and you see how different it works in melee to other iterations of a melee class. Like the whole, like, how skills have innate ways of dodging around people, especially on the greatsword, like, like going around enemies um, just by using the skill. Like, it's just a very mm-hmm. interesting class. But Elemental is where I'm at. Um, Edmund Park, Nubarama. Do you want to close that? What What are your opinions? Do you, do you stick them with the? Um, don't play elementalist. Play either guardian or mesmer. <laughs> and with that, I want to close out the show. God, I'm tired. Thanks for listening. Um, let's. let's You're tired. It's yeah. one thirty in the morning. Yeah. Um, do, do you have any plugs? I have to go camping tomorrow. What's that? Do you have any plugs? Um. No, just you know, same, same old, same old Twitch channel. Um, I, I. You have to keep it high energy. You have to keep. You have to do it every week. You have to bring it to I know, the show. I, you have to go. Yo, well, everyone, I, go I, to okay. Duran's fucking Twitch channel. I, I've made, right I've now. made the decision, and I know it pisses you off, but I made the decision. I'm not going to continue the Dead Space Two thing just because, like, <sighs> I lost. Worst. I Boom. lost the first ten chapters archived on there. Yeah, that's, and that's true. Yeah. I just, uh, I, I can't bring myself to to do the rest of it because I feel like it's just kind of pointless and I. Uh, but anyway, that's what's been keeping me from streaming. So I, now that I've made that decision, I'm definitely going to get back on there and start streaming. Um, the plan is every day, though, again, you know, I am coming up on a move. So there might be a week or two, depending on how the Internet uh, transfer goes, that I may not be able to stream. But my plan is definitely to start streaming every day for at least a couple of hours. And once Guild Wars 2 comes out, uh, a lot of that is going to be Guild Wars 2. <laughs> Hell yeah. Nibirama, any any plugs? Um, I would I would like to plug. Don't play elementalist dot com. It is a stay the fuck away from Mesmer. I'm gonna go buy that domain right now. <laughs> um, no, okay. Uh, I'd like to plug the Giant Bomb PC Gaming Hub. If you want to play PC games with other Giant Bomb people and other Giant Bomb people, you can play games with other Giant Bomb. Just don't people play games in PC Gaming Hub and talk to them too on the Mumble. Um, and talk to them on Mumble. Aw, shit boy. Yo, noob. Let's play Arma. <laughs> All right. All right. Do it. I'm launching Arma. Right. Boy, any plugs? Yeah, oh, we God. have game nights, so Counter Strike, um, Arma, anything. Yeah, the Arma one was today, yeah. I noticed. Anyway, yeah, I'll plug my site, plugandplaygaming.com. Um, ah, last time plug, I've been on, I've actually, like, <laughs> the, I've actually God had um, time to actually do some stuff. Like, me me and a friend did, like, a Batman spoiler oh, cast. Cool. He wrote a Batman review. How'd you like it? Um, I hated it. Well, I didn't I, hate I'm, it, but I didn't like it as much as I could have. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah, you. And Avengers was I much, agree. much, much better. Um, anyway, um, I have a lot of the audio done. I want to do a piece on Shoot Mania. I'm just waiting on the video because I, for some reason, my laptop has a hard time recording it. So I'm outsourcing <laughs> to a friend of mine. I'm like, yo, play Shoot Mania <laughs> and record it for me. And then just send me the files. So once I get that done, I'll make a, a neat little video and tell you, tell everyone my cool. thoughts on Shoot Mania. Cause, yeah. And for myself, um, this soon. is the Linky Cast. You can contact us, send us questions. Um, we definitely answer every question we get, either by direct contact or. Oh, wait, I forgot to plug the Lincoln Cast Facebook page, which actually a couple of people <laughs> oh, like. Jesus Christ. I'm serious. A couple of people like. Have you actually done any, so, anything uh, with it other than just making it? Don't, I, d- I didn't want this um, on the podcast. I, I used it to creep on people's Facebook oh, profiles. It, oh, for fuck's sake. So, yeah, like our Facebook <laughs> profile and um, check us out on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash the Lincoln Cast, um, Gmail. The Lincoln Cast at gmail.com, Twitter at the Lincoln Cast. Um, any questions will be answered. I, I can say that now because we have a few we get. Uh, if they're really Ask interesting, we'll put them on the show. Like, we haven't had a distance segment because I kind of, a lot of the questions we get are can we join the guild? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. Um, you can search for Giant Bomb Guild Wars 2 and find our guild there in the Giant Bomb Guild Wars 2 forums. Um, everyone's welcome. Anchored. Sorry? The, the post is stickied. 
Great. Yeah, sure. Everyone, anyone can join. Yeah, it's normally the first um, one on top of the yeah. page because yeah, because people keep thread. joining. It's pretty awesome. Um, anyone can join. Uh, everyone's welcome. What we do is we accept everyone, but if you're a jerk, we'll kick you. That, that's that's pretty much the, the limit of it. Um, as well as if you play elements. Yeah, and also we can. <laughs> yeah, sure. So I'm about um, to plug that I'm looking for a new guild. <laughs> <laughs> it's called No Noobs. <laughs> I don't know. We're keeping oh, I, I have a guild. Yeah, it's called Cerberus. You have to play as human. Oh, nice. <laughs> that was a good pull. That was a good pull. I like that. That was weird. Um. Anyway, uh, that, that's pretty much it. Join the guild. Have fun. Thanks for listening to the Linky Cast. This is episode what fifteen. Can't be up to fifteen already. There's only like. Oh, we'll see. We'll, we'll we'll see how we go. I, I this is coming to, soon. I'm stern talking to you about Durin about that figure. I'm going to play as Durin. So yeah. Oh god. Right. And bye yeah. Bye. Goodbye. Help. <laughs> bye.